This is Cider. We are ending the satellite to the Orca. I repeat, the Orca. One more kiss and I'll get lost. I can take this anymore. One more step, we have it all. The fever is knocking at your door. One more kiss and I'll get lost. I can take this anymore. One more step, we have it all. The fever is knocking at your door. Can you feel the fever? You give me a fever again. <laughs> Same great channel, same great host, incredible new intro for an incredible new season. Welcome to Zero One. Don't worry, guys. Season two is powered solely on the power of blah, blew it. It looks like our own magical Negro just ran out of magic, mate. I'm not white enough to make a comment about that. That's no, it. the problem was... is you're too white to make a comment about that. Yeah. <laughs> I was literally about to say, like, welcome to the, the new challenge, which is how I'm fast can we white. get the show taken got... down? I did it backwards. <laughs> I did it oh backwards. Oh, my God, Josh. But, uh, yes, uh, welcome, everyone, to Season 2 of the Zero One Show here at Bounding Into Comics. I am, of course, your captain and editor-in-chief, Spencer Bakuli. I am joined by my incredible crew of Jacob, Cider, and Josh. We are here to break down the dumbest news from across pop culture this week. Obviously, guys, you just saw the brand new intro that was made by our very own Cider. Obviously, he killed it. I laugh at every single element of it. It's so incredible. Uh, yeah, I just... Shout out to Cider. I, I know I'm clapping alone, but dude, you killed it. I love watching it every single time. You, you, we've had it on our plates for like a day or two now, and I've just been re-watching it every time I like have to switch over to our group chat. So dude, that was incredible. And yeah, everybody is loving it. It, Yeah, it's great. 
Uh, that was Jacob's Biden impression. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right, nailed it. Yeah, I know exactly. I, I can't even retell the joke because you know it's too good. I can't right, do it yeah. again. But what screwed me up is I actually said the same word twice, and it's like I couldn't like reset <laughs> it up again. I was like, "Fuck it." <laughs> See, now you just gotta like wander off stage and and mm. and be gone, and then you're good, and then everybody will defend you because you're eighty, or whatever. God, yeah. I, see, see, yeah, if I was man. Ron White, I'll just take a, a sip of my burger. Like, we're gonna do that again. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, or, or if you were like Dave Chappelle, you would just hit your microphone on the knee and then just tell the joke again because that's yep. what he does too. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, well, guys, or go ahead, Cider. What's up? Well, I just wanted to say welcome aboard the Orca and uh, in celebration. I think we need to punish the Japanese communists again. <laughs> It's always going to be two, Japan. It's always going to be two. Exactly. We we have to keep our our historical tradition until until such time as we don't have to anymore. I there were so many. I like ran into a dead end with that joke. I was like, oh my god. However, I try to finish this, I am going to get us all in trouble. But it's no. It's not going to top a space orca with a laser coming out of its mouth. Okay. That's <laughs> as soon as the AI spat that out, I was like, yep. That's it. That's the new laser right there. <laughs> it's so good. I love and the ship. Our updated so that's the message. Systems. That's the message in, in in this right here. This is cider. We are abandoning the satellite to the orca. Get to the I orca. Repeat, get to the orca. To the orca. Welcome to the orca. The orbital reconnaissance and combat array. Orca. It's cool. so cool, guys. Yeah. Welcome, welcome to your your first uh, independent Tokusatsu show, I guess, because I'm right? just channeling. You're channeling like uh, Voltes V. You're channeling like Space Captain Harlock. Uh, there's a bit of Macross in there. I'm excited for it. Like I'm so founding so force zero one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I, we're doing poses. We're absolutely doing poses. I'm putting that yes. in all of your contracts. I'm comp I'm putting that as a stipulation. You all have to pose. <laughs> But yeah, guys, we have so much to get through tonight. We have a bunch of dumb d business decisions coming out of almost every industry, out of Disney, out of Activision Blizzard, out of uh, Hollywood with a certain film that neither Cider or I can comment on in public unless we want to have our lives destroyed. No, I'm kidding. But yes, we will be getting into all of that tonight. But before we get into those topics, I want to say hello to everybody who's tuned in thus far. Obviously, we had RJ McCready kicking things off tonight with uh season two the sbi battle uh it what how what, what's the word i'm uh how little do you know how accurate you've just predicted the upcoming season don't worry stay tuned we have many adventures for you dc3 says season two already i didn't know we were in season one i mean what isn't i i guess i guess we just did the marvel thing right where we had our season one going and decided hey we're just gonna cut it and make season two now like this is season two like how they did with phase five are we, what are we on now? Five? Like, I don't even care. Like, I genuinely don't even care. Like what? We'll, we'll probably uh, do, talk do about we, Do we that. just in, like, are we in six now? Are we in six now? Now I'm, uh, now I'm trying to figure it out. Are, are we exactly. Like I genuinely don't know where the Marvels left us off. Like, <laughs> I don't See? think they know. No, we're still halfway through five. So we still got three more movies until we're done with five. Oh. You know, what's insane is I, you know, it's a fact you always bring up Jacob, but it's like all of these phase five, like they, we should be on phase seven by now technically if everything mm. had worked out for disney like all of these movies were supposed to come out like two years ago and and that's not even counting like pandemic delays that's just reshoots and scheduling mess ups and all of that stuff like that's so i like the way you said so that you said it sounded uh, like brie shoots like brie larson <laughs> reshoots brie shoots and i just thought that's really well, good that we we do know that that is what happened with the Marvels, where you know it started out as a Captain Marvel sequel, and Disney, you know, saw that nobody really liked her, and they went, "How do we bank? You know, how do we save this? Throw Iman Bellani in there." And we know Brie Larson was not happy about it, so I think Brie casting is a very accurate uh, description of what's that's how I learned. Over there. That's how I learned to make the intros, eccentric banana. <laughs> I just had a really weird idea. And I was like, what if we were all wearing the same uniforms? And then AI was like, have I got a deal for you? So it's, if you haven't seen the intro, I highly recommend you go back and watch it again. 
uh, many, 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 many times. Tell your friends, family, and strangers. <laughs> Grab people on the street by the collar and tell them to watch that intro. Or just tune in every week, like on time, though. Not like that. Yeah, that. You could you could tune in every time. I I I think uh, Cider also uploaded it to Twitter. If you guys want to keep rewatching it, like I do. But yeah, it, I'm I'm genuinely excited for the plans we have for this that Cider and I have we talked about like just very briefly but we're going to expand it's going to be a lot of fun like i'm very very excited let's see uh we have leslie tarkin in the house hail to all you lovely people <laughs> hail to you leslie it's not a show without you in our audience we all know that yes we got all the compliments on the intro hey it's me in hd in the words of dr nick riviera hey everybody hey hey it's me in hd welcome back my friend glad to see you here uh, at the start of the show i know you arrived a little late last time or these last few weeks so Happy to have you, as always. Let's see. Yep, we have a centric banana, as Cider was just talking to. Tehillim, shalom, and good to see you all. Shalom, my friend. Always a pleasure, Tehillim. You know that. Always, oh, yeah, always happy to see you in one of the chats. Always happy to talk to you. But uh, We have Meteor Advocate Timon. Hey, yo, Bounding, Spencer, Jacob, Cider, and Josh. Hello, Timon, our other resident Toku expert. I know that. I know that because we talk about it all the time in our uh, on Twitter. Let's see, who else is in the house right now? We have YouTube me. Hey, buddy, morning. I know you're down there in Australia. I have no idea what that time conversion is. I think it's like minus hours. Who I don't even know at this point, but it's clearly morning for no, you. they're so, ahead of us. I th yeah, I think it's in the future, 12 yeah, it's hours. Thursday morning for, tell, for yeah, YouTube me. Okay. 9, 9 a.m. there. Yeah, because I know like the international dateline goes like down and then like juts out and then cuts back in. And it's like, that's not fair. What are we doing here? Abolish time zones. That's my most libertarian take. <laughs> uh, yeah, DZ3 says it is AM. Uh, Resolute Rebellion. Hey, from uh, Nashville, gentlemen. Hello, Resolute Rebellion. What is going on? Uh, I haven't been to Nashville in a long time. This is like a complete side thing, but you just reminded me of it. A lot of people I've been talking to have been talking about how like great Tennessee is and everybody's visiting Tennessee and Nashville. And I haven't been in a long time, but is, is Nashville about to get like, what's the word um texas right like like we're all like the californian expats or whatever moved out of state and then they you know ruined everything hey, over hey, there is that what's about to happen it's it's, oh. it's a weird dichotomy because like yeah like so you look at tennessee as a state like obviously memphis and, and nashville like the two super liberal hubs in the of entire course. state yeah yeah, so, yeah but outside of those two cities the rest of the state's like overwhelmingly red so <laughs> yeah. unless everyone just dog piles in on like nashville they're gonna have a much harder time trying to flip that state than let's say atlanta for existence uh, for example or, so yeah. yeah 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 for sure you mean no, wakanda I... <laughs> oh, god I, well, that's what that they, rapper T Pain wanted to change it to. He wanted to he change no, it T. to I. T I. Sorry, I forgot yeah. the other the letter. He, he he walked off and said that Atlanta was Wakanda, and then pretended like he just said like the most profound thing anyone in the world has ever. <laughs> yeah, spoken. like he just told everybody Nelson Mandela's alive. You know. Yep. And then he was like, "Bro, just stop. Just just shut up. Like you clearly dropped out at fifth grade. Like clearly." <laughs> oh well, apparently. Whoa. Daily Wire ruined Tennessee somehow. Oh, is, is that where they're? That, well, that's that where, is where they're yeah, based Shapiro out of, uh, and all oh. those guys are. Yeah, East Tennessee, Tennessee is very pretty. It's in my yeah. backyard, literally. That I love. Like I love that. Is, does <laughs> Tennessee count as the South? Is that does that Tennessee yeah. count as the South? Because yeah. yeah, I love the. The, this is not I, to I will say this. part, but like I love the scenery down there. Like it's all gorgeous. I, I will say this. And it sucks. <laughs> Liz, Liz, Leslie Tarkin is correct. However, there's one difference. It says that uh, Nashville is the liberal hub of Tennessee and Memphis is the other one. No, Nashville is the liberal hub of Tennessee and Memphis is the liberal hub of Tennessee where you can get shot. So that's oh. the difference between the two. <laughs> that is a very important difference to make. It's like the difference between <laughs> Chicago and Indianapolis, I assume. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I don't so, know. Indianapolis and Chicago might have like equal. That, equal that amounts is a, of drive-bys. Yeah, that's like, a, I was going to say, like, that's a militia battle waiting to happen right there. And I don't even know what the Equal opportunity over. accessory to murder, huh? <laughs> yeah, <All right>? yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> With, well, I mean, in in Indiana, in Indiana, I mean, like, Indianapolis is like Chicago without like the 250,000 gang members. Oh, that are, oh yeah. Oh, so, so just roaming gangs of, of, of not gangs. Okay. 
That's great. Th yeah, just like roaming, like uh, what do you call them, cider? Like little little mob groups, like from video games, little right? Like groups. you go and there's like four enemies over there. They're not gonna. <laughs> it's just streets of rage in Indiana. <laughs> it's just streets of rage. <laughs> That's all it is. Dude. Skater die. <laughs> yeah, like what is it? The uh, what is it? Gary, Indiana is like the worst place in this country. It's like, double it, it dragon. <laughs> that oh god. It's 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 a big trouble. If we're gonna go that far, it's like straight up big trouble in little China. Like that's, that's how what bad the new it is video games should be, right? The new video games for your phone. Now that retro gaming's coming back. Retro gaming. Now that retro gaming's coming back. You've got like all these side scrollers that are making a thing. Like they should. Be, you should be like playing Double Dragon, but in like cities. So when you go to in, like real cities. So when you go to San Diego, you gotta dodge poop and homeless people that have needles sticking out of them, not into them, right? So you know. <laughs> I well, I I I will, I will get offer one pushback on on that stereotype because you got one thing wrong, and I say this as a resident of San Diego. We don't have the need or a a, a former or you know San Diego born or whatever. Um, they it's not the needles they they use down there. Down there, it's just the open like crack and heroin smoking. Like mm. when I when I walk down, you know, I'll park. So uh, for those who don't know, in downtown San Diego, there's a sports stadium for the San Diego Padres, and if you are up for walking like a mile or so, you can park for free uh, on the outskirts of downtown and walk in. But if you do, you have to walk through all the throngs of homeless people. And they like I literally walk by and they're just like, you know, crack pipe going, oh, hey, how's it going? You know, and then like it, it's bizarre, like they'll just blow it in your face. And it's, then you're like, are you the governor? And he's like, not right now. A little no, later, no, but no, not right no, now. Yeah. Honestly, honestly. <laughs> Newsom, that's that's why Newsom just wants it all to, to free flow because he wants to get a piece of it. <laughs> but I also had an, like you also when you said like we should do beat em ups in real cities, you made me think of like revive the Def Jam series, but as like a side scrolling video game. I would play that. Mm. I, I mean, keep the old like I don't want any new rappers. Oh. I still want the old school crew, right? Like I want like Fifty Cent. I want Diddy could be the boss. Diddy could be the final boss now. Diddy do it. Right, right. But, you know, like the one in San Diego is like the crack monster from Power Rangers. He's like, it's just yes. a crack monster, like a <laughs> crack monster you got to fight. Diddy's like Count Didula. He's like a vampire that takes your strength. We're getting way off track. We were going to we talk are, about we are, news. Yeah, and now we we're fixing gaming. About our own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotta, yeah. Right. See, get out of here. We're, we're fixing gaming. <laughs> That's not what we do around here. We complain about gaming. Like the BAFTA poll that baffles me. Okay, uh, let's get into this. this. Was before we, yeah, before we do, I'm just going to do one uh, b oh. one comment because Leslie says, "Should we start a GoFundMe to raise money to move Spencer out of California?" Luckily, Leslie, I am not there anymore. I haven't been there for what is it like four or five years now. I I long left, but uh, I I am in Arizona now, which is a step up, a much better step above it, and I can just drive over the border. Oh my god! Like. I, I'm gonna complain again because I don't can drive this, over you. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> at this point, honestly, uh, I, I went over. I went back to San Diego this weekend to see a friend, and gas in Arizona is like three fifty nine oh, average, dude. Oh, hold on, before you give me the number, let let me guess because last time I was there it was about two dollars more expensive than where I am now. So is gas over there probably about five sixty right now? My friend, my dearest friend, Jacob, that is so optimistic. I literally, uh, the lowest price I had was five eighty nine, and everything else is like six to seven dollars. I hated, like, I felt, I, I felt like I had to go take a mortgage out just to get back home. Oh, yeah. And I drive a a Honda Civic. I'm like, no way. That that's a, that is a failed state if I've ever seen one at this point. Like it is. I, so I, I haven't bad. been back there since 2021, so it's been, it was right before right. Uh, they started with the whole like vaccine thing. But yeah. I, I can only like imagine. And then of course, you no, know, you try to go back there, you get like a rental car, so you, like you can get around and everything, and then you got to pay like, like how much it takes to fill up an entire tank on, on that kind of like gas money. Like, oh my god, it, it's like seventy seventy dollars easy, and that's like a ten dollar. Or a, a ten gallon tank, right? Seventy yeah. bucks. That's absolutely bonkers. Something we ha I have no solutions here. I don't think any of us do, but something has to give, and I need it to give because that is an. Ex I should not be paying that much money for gas. No. <laughs> it, yeah, bad. like uh, have you have you like considered that car that runs on fats? Have you tried the fat car? 
Mm-hmm. It's like the, the schmat cat, have but it runs on cats. <laughs> have you tried uh, driving a car with your feet? Apparently, that worked for the Flintstones. Yeah, so for the yeah, but that but do at this know? point. At this point, I'm ready to like get like a large skateboard and put a sail on it and just oh, like wind yeah, down. So for for, yeah, for, for reference here, gas over at my uh, local uh, gas station just hit about three forty five today, and I was like, oh man, it really jumped. Dude, so, <laughs> I don't get that. But you live wow. right next to the oil state. How did? How does this happen? Here's here's how it happens, and this is uh, this is a why. Carry Lake do this. <laughs> no, it, <laughs> here's why california's gas is, is, is so expensive and spencer knows this because he was there every single election year not in the every election year it seems like every two years there's this thing called a gas tax that they always sneak into yeah. every single election You're right kidding me and, and here's what they do they always be like oh it's only like five cents like 10 cents not it's only, uh, it's only a few cents it's no big deal and because people are stupid they just go oh it's like about 10 cents it, it's no big deal right okay that's how people have been voting for the last 30 yeah. years so imagine 30 years worth of gas tax piled up to where we are now what that's are why california is with it it's oh, not we're, air we're conditioning fi- clearly we're, we're, hey hey we're fixing the roads we're, we're, we're gonna fix these roads here what in california roads are, you, it's the desert what goes wrong with the roads in the desert yeah. when i was still living in san diego uh five years ago there was a pothole uh right next to my apartment that really uh messed up my girlfriend at the time like she hit it really bad one time and it screwed up her bumper yeah. It is still there. Like I drove by the spot today. Still it is there. still there. Mm-hmm. I do not know what they are spending all that money on. But it also gets worse because so what they'll do is they'll go, okay, gas tax, uh, five cents for five years. And everybody goes, okay, there's a limit. There's not that much. When those five years come up, they go, oh, here's another gas tax for 10 cents. Oh, it's just five cents more, right, guys? Like, so we'll do 10 yeah. cents for five years. And then people go, five more cents okay and it's just like jacob was saying like they're stupid so they get used to it in increments because and nobody says up. that because nobody says uh th- this money's starting to pile up a little bit here <laughs> it's just like oh five cents no it's no big deal and, yeah it, 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 it's got to be like a couple dollars at this point now that is on our gas tax like it is really or on it's, the, the it's at least three dollars at this do you, point do you think yeah <laughs> it, it's got to be a couple you think it's it, an <laughs> answer uh leslie's point I, I, I'm old enough to remember, I think it was either 2000 or 2001, somewhere in that time period, where gas in California hit $2 a gallon for the first time ever. I remember ever. that. And people Everybody were was flipping out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Flipping he was like, out. we're going everywhere. Get the get the, uh, the jugs. Like, we have to get it. That was, like, an amazing, like, month or two. Yeah. And, and, now, and now it's triple. That. And now it's yeah. triple. <laughs> Every everybody pointing out like Leslie and Resolute Rebellion, you're all saying that uh, you know, I remember when gas was a dollar, I remember when gas was uh, you know, three night or and even Resolute Rebellion saying like uh, I was paying 10 cents less the other day. Here's something I've I've come to find in recent years because with all you know, going back to old classic media because everything nowadays sucks. Yeah. Do not look at the gas signs in the backgrounds of anything, whether it's a Yo. comic book, whether it's a movie, a TV show, you you know, I, this isn't even like a, a an emotional cry. Like you will, the manliest man will see the you know ninety seven cent gas sign in the background of like Die Hard, and they will break down weeping just from like the sheer audacity of it. Like it this, is bad. <laughs> this is a meme. You're gonna see this meme go around uh, as the election heats up. The uh, there's a there's a gas station or somewhere nearby a gas station that's on fire during the Floyd riots and it's a dollar seventy and the quote the caption below is oh man do you remember when gas was one seventy it's like a huge inferno behind it you know it's- <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys can see this here but this is a uh, a photo of the last time this is when Trump was in office here here in oh, Georgia man. it was two dollars and thirty seven cents before Biden got into election and as I said as of right now it's like three forty nine here so right and that's with Biden just dumping all of the gas reserves by the way so it would be way yeah. higher if we weren't just doing all of that hi oh, jacob yeah, you're like being center I, stage i i think you're were you the one who posted about that cider that he just like dumped all of our oil reserves and didn't yeah. like refresh yeah. them at mm-hmm. all or yeah. mm-hmm. got like what, what could is it, go it wrong seven, seven days worth of something i think it's like all we have left at this point because we're not something trying. like that yeah yep um one last one last stamp on the inflation on the uh oh, yeah. on this because this image has been painting me for like a week 
Yes. I hate. I absolutely hate this image because yeah, you five dollars, dude. Four for ten. Oh there was my. another one. I there was another one I saw. Uh, shout out to Peter Fishkey. I think he's the one who sent it to me, or at least we were talking about it. But it, it showed like. Five dollar footlongs. Remember that slogan from uh, mm -hmm. Subway? Now it's six dollars for six inches, and it's like what we are like. What the happened? Marketing to this country? department. <laughs> yeah, the marketing I, department was I, like, "You're seriously." I've, seriously. I've even <laughs> brought this up here on this stream a couple of times before. But you remember back in the day with Carl's Jr. Their whole th selling point was yeah. like, "Hey guys, we got a six dollar burger." Now the marketing of the six dollar burger is that you get a restaurant style burger for less than six bucks. That was the whole uh, marketing behind it, right? After a few years, they got rid of it all together and just called it a thick burger because they realized that now, like, yeah. all of their burgers are, like, seven bucks just by themselves. Dude, I, you, you you brought up burgers, and I'm like, we need we, we should definitely move back to the real topic before I get back on my jack-in-the-box bullshit. <laughs> oh, no. I'm, I'm still mad about that. Uh, oh, Leslie says, yes. anyone remember the dollar menu at McDonald's? I, I came to this realization like two years ago, Leslie. They got rid of dollar menus in favor of value menus. And now everything is still just as equally expensive on them. It sucks. Look, I know we're desperately trying to get away from this topic right now, but I just have to bring <laughs> up one more point. If you go back and you watch, uh, if you go see like a picture of like a McDonald's menu from like 20 years ago, it it looks like almost as ancient as like the, the, the tablet that Moses wrote the Ten Commandments yep. on. Like that's how much, that's how much well, we've completely fallen apart in 20 years. Did you guys, it was on Twitter like a month ago, they found this perfectly preserved Burger King in a mall. Mm -hmm. Like for whatever reason, yeah. they just slapped a yeah, wall yeah. up, and like everything—the napkins, the condiments, all the thing—everything's still there. They just cleaned out the freezer, obviously, and the power was still running to it for God's sakes. And it was all just sitting in there, and the prices were still up on everything. And again, like the, all the pictures coming out of it, like do you remember fifty cents for a Big Mac, uh, uh, uh -huh. a Whopper? Remember fifty cents for a Whopper? And it's like, uh, remember, no, remember when Wendy's? Don't do uh, this to me. Remember when the <laughs> Wendy's and, and, and the cups over there were yellow? Remember those days? Yep. Don't, <laughs> don't make me remember, please. Don't make me remember. <laughs> I, I remember that back when I was in college. So this has got to be around like 2010, 2011. Uh, they used to, <laughs> Wendy's used to have like frosty keychains, right? Yep. Like. Mm -hmm. And you used to be able to like buy one for like 20 bucks and for the next like six months, whenever you wanted, you could go in and get a free mini frosty, no limits, blah, blah, blah. They don't do that anymore. They haven't done that for years. And it makes me furious every time. And then uh, let's see. Yeah. A Whopper used to be 99 cents. And then, hey, it's me in HD. And also George Egerog brought this up. The, you know, the dollar stores and the 99 cents only stores not only are raising their prices, but yeah, the 99 cent stores are closing. I, that, yeah. that is like the most insane news um period yeah. like I, I i don't know as a kid like a poor kid growing up like that was an institution and now they're going to be gone what is it going to be like amazon value stores now? that is exactly Look, what the moral gonna, of the just, story <laughs> folks is that everything's going great everything's just, yep. <laughs> just, great. just uh, <laughs> biden boom that's what it is the biden mm -hmm. boom. Every, Everything but, is going so great that even over in London, they know exactly what they're doing. They this is how great things are going is that people have forgotten Mario, right? Like right, in, in terms of video Mario. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, to be Ryan Gosling, though, like imagine when he's going to be eighty and they give him a lifetime achievement award for being the guy everybody associates themselves it, with, not for any right? specific role, but because the memes where everybody identified with him. That's what his lifetime achievement award for is. The, it's the it, totally me award, right? They'll give him the totally me award. The the uh, a, a couple months ago there was that story where Ryan Gosling. Uh, or, or like it, it came back up in the news again because one of them was talking about it, but how Sylvester Stallone wants Ryan Gosling to like take over the Rambo. role of Rocky or Rambo. That's what it was. Yeah. Rambo. Should that ever come up? Yeah. And everybody like I, I think in like the headline, I, I I highlighted a quote from Gosling about how he like always watched those movies and he's totally up for it or whatever. And yeah. all of the retweets for that article on Twitter were like, literally me. I'm, I support him because he's literally me. This is literally me, literally yep. me. And I was just like, yep, you guys, you know exactly what's going on. The lifetime <laughs> literally me award. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the lifetime literally me award. I love that one. We're going to have, we're, we're going to have to submit that, but <laughs> before we get to any future Hollywood accolades, let's talk about, 
a, a British accolade that makes absolutely zero sense and just proves the world is is completely broken. So BAFTA, for those who don't know, that is the uh, British uh, Association for the Fine Theater Arts. It is basically their version of the Academy, uh, you know, the Academy of Motion Pictures we have over here. And in honor of this year's, so about like 10 years ago, they started a video game award show. And in honor of this year's, what do you call it, uh, ceremony, they had they hosted an open poll asking players from around the world who is the most iconic video game character of all time? So their their methodology was basically, here's an open form, write in the name of the character, write in the name of the video game, and uh, I think like a, a reason why they're iconic, something like that. And in the end, they tallied votes from only 4,000 individuals across the world. So that's something to really keep in mind because... As we get into this, I've gotten a lot of pushback from people saying, oh, this is a British only list. That's why she's up there. Or, oh, this is worldwide and it's so many people. And it's like, guys, always check the methodology because it will often, often show you that there's nothing going on here. Like, like it's all fluffed up. So, yes, as, as Cider has brought up here, this is just... A, like this is how insane this list is. So the number one most popular iconic video game character of all time was, or a, as voted by four thousand people, Laura Croft of Tomb Raider. Now, as who who brought it up here? Uh, yeah, DZ Three says I would say Laura Croft is top twenty, but the most iconic. As much as I love Laura, yeah, no, and, and I think that's sort of the general sentiment from video game players across the spectrum. Is yeah, of course everybody knows Laura Croft. Maybe not the newer Laura Croft, but we all know the the classic ones because she's been you know a uh, video game sex symbol for a while. She's just but they also always been around. like huh. make sure to include both versions. So that's like no, no, no. I know. Just, you know, like letting you know that it's both. If you put Tomb Raider is that across or whatever, no. You're voting for yeah. Lara. You're, you're you're not voting for the original one. You're voting for our yeah. new yeah, yeah. strong strong protagonist one. Oh, keep keep that in mind, Josh. Because once we get to the end of like the list, I I have a thought that really links back to that. But then yeah, from there we have at number two is Mario. Who honestly, again, not even a bias thing. It's just like a fact. Everybody knows Mario when it comes yeah. to video games. You say yep. video games, they'll probably think of Mario. Like I see those the, the jump the listings main. on the side. Right, the jump, the jump, man. So like, look, I, huh? Go, Josh. Hold on, hold on. Just yeah, yeah. Do, look and, and do like like this is take this thing and just make it a test, right? Go regardless of how old you are, go and ask your mom. Show her two pictures, Mario and Lara Croft, and ask her, okay, which one do you actually recognize? Tell me the name of this character. I'm I mean, just saying, just, oh, just on face Mario. value. I don't know who the other one is. Like honestly. Just on face value, maybe I'm out of touch. You guys can correct me here. Who has sold more video game units in their history? Laura Croft or Mario? Right. Laura no, Croft or right Sonic? Yeah. Laura Croft or Pikachu? Laura right. Croft or like, Pac-Man? It's like, uh, uh, what, what, what metric are we using to judge this? They, like, there is literally, it's just, did a person put that this like write this character in like i look at that right side of characters mario sonic pac-man if if you were to like pull me off the top of my head that would be my pick for the top three because no they're two four and six what the hell <laughs> it, it's like someone gave you the answer to a test but they didn't give you the question so it's just like you know <laughs> but really if you if you think about the british driving on the wrong side of the road maybe they got the one the the ones cut side wrong so like mario is number right. one sonic is number two oh, pac-man's number three <laughs> you know number four belongs to to master chief and that maybe that's how it goes because you know the british they drive on the wrong side of the road maybe that's what happened it, instead like, of that going, makes like, more from, sense. Yeah, instead of going from like what is it, right to left, like you do with, with manga, it's just you go from uh, right to left, top to bottom with with the British. <laughs> it, 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 so what's happening in the UK is because they're so used to getting stabbed, they just fantasize with characters who have guns. This is what's going on. I guess. I feel like, <laughs> like you know, Mario doesn't have a gun, gun but he, he stomps on brown things. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's all culture wars. But yeah, like to that point. Uh, number three, Agent 47, Sh shut the hell up. I'm sorry. No. Like, he probably doesn't even bald really belong guy. on this list. Just bald he, guy. 
very iconic um, very much you show that to a person and they'll go james bond maybe because he's just an assassin in a suit like you get out of my face like i i'm sorry that that if you if you just show yeah, the no. agent if you just show the thing let me just the hit, hitman poster hitman cover hold on if you just show oh, it when you're pulling up yeah because he's just because he's you know he's just got the gun in his hand he doesn't even look like an assassin he just kind of looks like it's it's some like here like you just you just take a look at that that's not james bond that's not even anything that's like some advertisement right. for some chinese movie you know oh Hitman, my god that is you know? way better than i was even gonna say it's I was like gonna some say, chinese looks, movie you know it does look like some no you are 100 percent on point like that is an amazing comparison because i was just gonna say he looks like the the mid boss goon in like a jason statham movie yeah right? who like has an extended like he'll show up in the beginning and like the background then he'll have an extended fight scene but he still doesn't really talk or anything he's just there that's what he reminds me of or yeah. like Josh Brolin in the old boy remake, which nobody wants to be. The guy that's of. usually in gay porn, but for whatever reason, his <laughs> agent got him into this position. Yeah, right. You know, oh, yeah. yeah. No, that yeah. Guy. His his agent got I him. Like, you talking about? Yep. yep. <laughs> uh, Meteor Advocate Simone says Jason Statham the game. Yeah, uh, right. I would play that so hard. Jason's there. I the, everybody can make fun of me. I know Jacob is probably going to like not allow me to talk about movies anymore. But one of my favorite action moments in any movie is, I believe it's the second Transporter movie where he has the fight with the fire hose and he like kicks the fire hose up and then like slings it in the guy's face and it bounces off. Oh, it's like the coolest, dumbest like shonen move, and I love it so much. <laughs> um, is uh, is that the one where he's sliding around on the oil? like with the no, skates that, or no 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 that that's argyle that that's yeah argyle, that's, argyle. Where, where, that's, a, with, that's um, another terrible movie that he's talking about oh no oh, he I didn't have things on his feet that's right he was just sliding around like yeah they there, there had shoes a, on or whatever yeah, that, there, there's that and then in argyle there's a full-on they do a scene like that where the oils entire oil floor is gets ice, covered with oil a, apparently mm -hmm. that's literally what they treat it like in argyle guys we've we've talked about it before and we won't we're not like we don't really have time to bring it up but go look up the argyle scene with who is it again it's um uh bryce dallas howard bryce and howard. sam rockwell it, it, like it's bryce the most dallas hideous looks version awful. of her so yeah the she they made her really bad they, they made her look like jillian bell uh, towards the end of the movie yes. and i was like oh yes. my god yes. this looks yes Oh, the bike pedals. That's right. The bike pedals. That was the difference. That's what it was. They yes, acted yes, yes. like cleats. It was bike pedals. That's right. Which made, you know, at least there's some like ingenuity there, something unique. In Argyle, it's literally like, oh, I'm just going to skate on my like normal Ice boots. Ice is oil. And start doing this. It's, it's really, really, really dumb. And it makes me sad because once, like Bryce Dallas Howard's really attractive and she looks like Jillian Bell. And I don't she know how you pull that butt. off. It's yes. wonderful. They had to digitally it's... flatten it down for all the posters for Jurassic Park. It's pretty great. And I make that. It makes me so mad. It really makes me so mad because of all the reasons for dinosaurs to chase a woman, you know, through the jungle. That would be like a yeah. good a good meal is right is yeah top yeah. of the list, <laughs> right? But right. yeah, guys, from there we have Donkasaurus. That's right, the Donkasaurus. What, can, can, can we get uh uh what do you call it um like Zor zords or mecha and one of them is the donkasaurus like that's that that should be your uh morpher <laughs> um uh let's see yeah so then from there guys we have at, at number four we have sonic the hedgehog which makes sense we all know sonic the hedgehog <laughs> What? <laughs> I just, I, I, I'm sorry. I just imagine a twerking Megazord. I can't. I can't. Sonic sound clap attack. Right. Uh, <laughs> the, the Yellow Ranger in this series is very ratchet. So, I mean, it's like. <laughs> exactly. Breaking cases, sick beat. <laughs> Honestly, they should have kept that gag up <laughs> from the movie. It just have a button where you hit anything, and it's it's all it's like a Megas XLR. They absolutely should have kept that. <laughs> My milk exactly. Trucks bring off the dinos <laughs> to the yard. Oh, exactly, no. Leslie. But they might as well just make Megan the Salon a Power Ranger at this point, right? 
Do well, not, was don't you wish that evil ninja, on me, Ricky Bobby. That, Do not that wish ninja that evil steel on one. She had quite a uh, caboose. They had to use a different stunt double for her. They did. I remember that one. <laughs> yeah, Brie Larson I, I, I was wonder, a stunt double. I, I wonder if the Yellow Ranger in this series gets shot by a boyfriend. Or is that? <laughs> <laughs> so Spear getting Ooh. shot by your boyfriend. That has nothing to do with Sack Boy. Yeah. Number five is uh number five on our list is Sackboy. I know George uh Eggerog brought it up and he said, I've never heard of Sackboy. He is uh from the little big planet games. They he was sort of like pushed as Sony's like mascot. Yeah. Uh yeah, like mascot character back in the early or in the late 2000s off of it was the... like PlayStation 3 was that what they tried to make him the hood ornament for to really yeah, show and... off the capabilities of the ray tracing. And, and it never the the game so if you haven't played them little big planets are essentially very casualized platformers that are more about experiencing like what the world can throw in front of you and how it can be built rather than outright challenge so it's very they're detailed fun. yeah it's very detailed like the craftsmanship is all there there's nothing inherently wrong with the games it's just they're sort of so bland and and, and in the middle that it's a, a it's a bold decision to rest your entire like studio name on on that character if if you will so it, it, it just it didn't work uh it, he kind of ended up getting superseded by kratos after everybody remembered oh yeah he's like cool and brutal and badass so yeah to that like all that said he's not really a number fiver there's absolutely no way he makes number five on the, this list especially over pac-man at number six pac-man like the video game guy then you he's have number a yellow seven. dot how do you get Every, more iconic than a yellow dot? <laughs> everybody recognizes Pac-Man. You you draw a circle, you cut out one pizza slice, you go, who's that? People go, Pac-Man, Pac-Man, Pac-Man. Even if, again, it's one of those characters that non-gamers or, or non-video game players recognize like off the bat. Then at number seven, you have Link from Legend of Zelda, who even, you know, even if we had everything in sort of like regular appropriate order, I still would probably put Link around here. Like, People know oh, him. No. I think we call huh. those pongs. People of non-gaming. We call them pongs. <laughs> I actually kind of love that. I'm actually people of non-gaming. I really love that. People pongs. of non-game or uh, what? What is it? Um, non-gaming. Uh, what is the word they always use for like um or like non-gaming abled individuals? <laughs> nigh. Uh, nigh. Right. Uh, a bunch of nighs in here. Nigh. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be careful there. <laughs> uh yeah george says pac-man had a cartoon when i was a kid oh he's had cartoons for like he had the one as a kid they did a, they've done a couple like cg ones over the years i know that one of my nephews when he was younger he loved it it was really bad but he loved it so yeah like he's been around people know he's so iconic guys they literally put him as the final move in guardians of the galaxy volume two that's who Star Lord turns into. It, he's so iconic that that awful, awful movie Pixels highlighted their use of Pac Man because they knew everybody would go, "I know Pac Man." So they even got no... the guy who made Pac Man to say a stupid line about Pac Man in that movie. I, I, I can't handle any discussion about that movie. Otherwise, okay. we're just going to we're going to fling into like Mahler and Remember, Nerdotic remember, remember uh, <laughs> Ashley Benson before her life completely fell apart. Those are yeah, lines. dude. Like, <laughs> What like one and that was a fast fall. She's like mm -hmm. the female equivalent of like Josh Brolin or not Josh Brolin. Um um um, what's his name? Uh, uh exactly. Josh uh Josh Hartnett. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, yeah. Who, Josh Hartnett rose up. It's like she took Josh. one step on the stairs and somehow managed to fall down the stairs, <laughs> like fall all the way back down. Yeah, it was really bad. Poor Ashley. But then yeah, we have uh yeah Tifa is better than Laura Croft a hundred percent every day. It's funny, Ravul. That like I distinctly remember that being a conversation back in like the PS1 days. Like, who's better? Like, who's the hotter waifu? Is it Tifa or Lara Croft or Laura Croft? And you don't really hear about that anymore. So I don't know, just a funny little remnant from the past that I I recognize. I hear you. <laughs> then yeah, so we as we keep going down, we have number eight, Master Chief from Halo. Again, I think if we had the Lincoln and Master Chief are probably in their appropriate places i think they're popular probably not the most but you would have people well, who would know them especially the chief we got to go back to the criteria this is iconic this is True. not popular this is iconic True. so when that's, you that's... look at these characters you know who they are 
When you go and look at Laura That's Croft, you are that right. is a brunette woman with sunglasses and or a blue tank top. You know, that's it. That's it. When you look at paramount, when you look at Link, if he has pointed ears and a pointed brown hat, preferably not a white one, you know that that's (laughs) you know that that's Link. When you look at at a a motocross man with a gold shield, eye shield, you know that that is Master Chief and or a motocross rider. (laughs) When you look at Kratos and you see a Greek man with a very strange tattoo. You know that this is Kratos. When you look at Shadowheart, that's just, that's a weird, random, r- r- yeah. Raid Shadow Legends character. <laughs> like, th- that, that's, as we'll start seeing, like, you're completely right, Cider. That's where this list even starts falling apart even more, is that all of the characters we get to at, you know, from 10 on, most of them are, like, really recent characters, really niche yes. characters. Like, Shadowheart, Baldur's Gate 3, not iconic. That, that's Again, the thing it, that bothered me too. It's like, why are characters from Baldur <laughs> Gate three on here like three times? Right. Like, yeah, it, it, it's completely. That was the one British of the things I was like, this to makes Baldur's sense. Gate. It, it makes they, no sense. It, they're biased to Baldur's Gate because it's literally just the thing that came out. Like that's literally it's why the one where you can the, boink bears. That's why the British it, and progressive, bears. Progressive champion game. <laughs> I didn't know Muslims play Baldur Gate three. That's weird. <laughs> now you know, right? Apparently, they're down with Shadowheart too. Hit, 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 hit the, uh, yeah, exactly. I was gonna say, hit, hit me with the the, uh, the uh, technical problems. The please stand the, by. Right back. Yeah, the please stand by. That's what I was trying to think of. Yeah. That time I saw it coming. That was that was the perfect use of it, cider. <laughs> but yeah, as as we keep going, we have Arthur Morgan, number eleven, Red Dead Redemption two. Again, not iconic. Look at this character design right there, and That's even, a even it's not not only is it a cowboy, but can you tell the difference between him and John Marston right there from like nope. their profile? You can't. So nothing iconic about him. There is the you're. Uh, that feels like a vote that's like the game's iconic but even then re- no red dead 2 is worse than red dead 1 i like i think everybody can agree with that like it's it's technically impressive and there's more to do but the the gameplay the story all that stuff is way tighter in red dead 1 so uh but yeah exactly I, I john marston is way more famous than i do want to come back to the point to where you design. have to play as him again yeah get back to design yes, neither yes. one of these characters are distinguishable from any of the mm. cowboy characters that have existed since 3d gaming started they have Absolutely. a bolero belt of bullets across their chest i think i just probably said that twice in spanish <laughs> but whatever they have the bullet belt across their chest Try they to. have the ruffled collared shirt that's unbuttoned a certain degree and stained with various bodily fluids frumpy hat with lighter colored band and they carry around a rifle and or shot off shotgun shotgun they have spurs black black boots most likely there's nothing distinct about any other of them against any other character like when you give a character a white hat they immediately stand out from every other cowboy in existence that's why because, yeah. they did it in the movie so you knew who the good guy was because he had the white hat and the bad guy had the black hat because he was well, the bad guy. E- even more to your point, Cider, is that out of all the characters that are on this list, Arthur Morgan and and John, like the Red Dead characters, they are meant to be sort of generic because you're supposed to dress them up how you like, right? Like there is no set design. You go, true. Well, do, you, do you want a blue cowboy hat? Do you want a bull, like a bull hat? Do you want your bolero? Or do you want a, a what do you call it? A, like a bolo tie, like everybody's John Marston looks or, or Arthur looks different from everybody else's. So there's all you're we saying here is, is, is cowboy. Like you, you are completely on the no- nose. He is just cowboy design. And it, yeah. I, I, I'm standing by the, like my theory that he just got picked cause it's recent. But and then somehow we get to, that's yeah. better than Pikachu. That's more better recognizable than Pikachu. than Pikachu. Pikachu. Like Pikachu does not sit down here. Pikachu goes top three. E freaking Z. Like, again, these are iconic characters. You show somebody a Pikachu, even if they don't know it's Pikachu, they know, like, oh, that's the Pokemon. That's Pokemon. Like, I I understand what that is. Or it's, you know, it's anime. People can 
associate with it. Even back in the day when it was like brand new, right? Like when we were growing up, me, Cider, Jacob, Josh, adults in our lives, even if they didn't know what it was, they'd be like, oh yeah, that's the Pokemons, right? Like to be yeah. super, super stereotypical and, and hacky. Like, oh yeah, that's the Pokemans. Like it was always like that, even well, though they didn't know who it was. So this is just a crime in and of itself. Spencer, and, and you know, <laughs> and you know this yourself, like you don't even have to like nail Pikachu. You could no. just do yellow circle and two yellow pointy top things and people are oh, like, oh, yeah. that's Pikachu. That's oh, how iconic 100%. that is. It's like white guy with red hat is either Trump supporter or Mario. <laughs> it's a 50-50 shot, okay? Mustache or not. It, it depends. Are you in Brooklyn or are you in uh, the south Texas. side of Chicago at 3 a.m. going to go yeah. get a sandwich? <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, the, the small at the good one. The, the, this the, is Mario the country. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mario. This is a Mario country. <laughs> I got, I got <laughs> on while I was going to the store for a mushroom. That's, I hope somebody makes that into a webcomic, a Bowser at a press conference, and you have like Luigi and Mario like <laughs> tying him up on the side of the street in the middle of the night. This is a Mario country. This is Mario country. <laughs> and then, and then when they finally find him, they're like the super shroom versions of him, and they're all really buff, like the brothers were. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I would say it's literally just two Goombas, like two Goombas. <laughs> it's the two Goombas. It wasn't Mario and Luigi. Yeah. It was two, they're like in mascot costumes with like their Goomba faces sticking yeah. out of it, you oh know? And I, I'm just imagining yeah. two Goombas wearing like those really thin tank tops because that's all the brothers were yeah, wearing right. in like all of their photos. <laughs> Uh, I think I have something to draw later tonight. This, this is, is the opening of the next Mario movie. I guarantee it. This, this is how they'll open the next Mario movie. <laughs> this, this is what the kids call cinema, folks. <laughs> Just like a single tear rolls you down hear, all of our faces. You can hear <laughs> Seth Rogen. Get it? <laughs> God. <laughs> exactly, exactly, like exactly. That's, yeah, exactly. That's a thousand percent what I'm going for. So awesome. Like the visual is so good. I have to draw that later. But back to the list at number 13, we've got Steve from Minecraft, where I obviously my my like hinge re, like my reaction my from the jump is like no way, but Minecraft's huge. Like kids love this, and all the kids who grew up playing Minecraft are like teenagers, young adults now. So I I could see him being there. Honestly, I could probably see him being higher. Number yeah, 14. Way higher. Let me ask you. Okay, yeah. Iconic, right? That's right, a I block that's... character using a block tool. You know that that's Minecraft. There's no other mm. game that does that, at least not on the like pop culture right, level. Right. Yeah, so I got to like keep reminding myself of that. Yes. Right. So like Pikachu, Steve is automatically visually distinguished with Minecraft. There's no other game that looks like that. That is very true. Yeah, no, actually, yes, you are completely right. No argument. I got to keep that in mind that we are we are talking about straight iconic, not just like recognizable or or popular. That I like I like we said earlier, the popular thing is where I'm getting hung up on. At number right, 14, let's get we, let's get huh. to the bottom of this. Right. So where is Mega Man on the freaking list? He Never. doesn't make it. Doesn't make it. I pointed that out in the damn article. I was pissed about that. Yep. Like you're gonna put oh, uh three Baldur's Gate characters on this and no Mega Man. Three. No, oh, no. no they, knuckles. They couldn't like, yeah, not even knuckles, right? Right? They couldn't even put red guy on Luigi in, didn't even make it. Luigi. <laughs> oh yeah, but, no, but Donkey no. Kong didn't make it. Donkey Kong but actually, I actually yeah. wanted to know right. Yeah, because because I actually wanted to know a little bit more about that because it kind of looks like it's only main characters from like, the video games, not like the side characters. I well, suppose. I think that's that's a problem with one Baldur's with Gate, the, though. The, the the yeah, that's actually oh. yeah, you're, that's that's right. Yeah, oh, those are all side one. characters. They're on there yeah. three times. Those are all side characters who are like optional. If you're doing a playthrough, you don't necessarily have to hang out with them or play with them. It's not even the the protagonist because the protagonist is a creator character. So yeah. it again, this is we'll 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 wrap it up at or like when we we'll talk about it at the end of the list but like this is part of the re, the problem with the methodology and links to what i think the entire point of this list was but before we get to that we'll keep going number 14 solid snake keeping in mind 
Cider's uh like like his iconic uh criteria, right? I I don't even know if he would make that, make this list under that. Because like we know who Solid Snake is as game like enthusiasts, but generic mullet man with bandana kind of feels like people am would I go G.I. Joe what do you first. Think? No, people yeah, would go G.I. Yeah. Joe first, especially here in G the US, they would go G.I. Joe first. They yeah, would they think would that that Storm Joe. Shadow or some or like Snake oh, Eyes without totally his right. mask. Yeah, you're totally you know, right. Or that's... or they would go. You know, if they were older, they would go for Kurt Russell because that's his inspiration. Yeah. But you would right. immediately go like, oh, that's Kurt yeah. Russell from Escape from New York, Escape from L.A. Yada yada. So right. on and if so he forth. had the eye so, patch, if you're dealing with Big Boss and not yeah, Snake, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yes, yes. Oh, a hundred percent. So. Yep. As much as I love Snake and MGS is like my one of my favorite game series of all time, I don't know if he ranks Crash at fifteen. Maybe I, I this is this is a I'll throw this to you, Josh, because this is something I've I've been noticing in our replies and stuff. Like, was Crash bigger in the UK? Like, was it that huge of a thing out there? Look, so I, I played I played on the PS one and I yeah. played the third one. So I didn't even play the first or the second one. I just played the third. Right, a friend of mine yeah. had it. And and I was like, oh, Crash is like huge. I was like a Mario player more than anything. Yeah. Um, but it's like, even though, like in hindsight, because I bought the collection, whenever it was, like, it came out like recently, 2016, 2017, whenever it was. And I was yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. is like, this is great games. Like, I just, this is how, is how is this not iconic? And when the character was not announced for Smash, <laughs> I was like. That was, Whoa. yeah. That that kind of that <laughs> yeah. seals the deal, right? If you're not in Smash, which to Smash, all of our points, really legit. I mean, yeah, to all of our points, right? Steve's in in Smash, Pikachu's in Smash, Cloud is going to be in Smash. When that we get that to, is he's the number list. 16. If yeah, you're in Smash, right? like, you're in you're on the list. <laughs> so that you're either, been you're like either the, iconic the or you're like a, a Nintendo pet project like incinerator yeah, right, right? like yeah. there's no yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, uh g prim primicado says notice not one resident evil character on there exactly this list is really well, screwy and, and we'll talk about it we or had we had uh we had it earlier pointed out with uh yeah we had no mega man no ryu yeah. chun li uh yep. there's no fighting game characters that was Zero. uh you know this, this sucks that i haven't played half of these games and it's true but the thing, we don't even really have to go line for line with yeah, this yeah, yeah. at this point. We're, we're at the end This here, is the yeah. one that gets me is Ellie. I I, I, yeah. I don't care about Lara Croft being at the top. Right, I care right, about right, Ellie right. being on this list at all. Like, there is she... nothing visually iconic about Ellie. Nothing. You cannot tell her apart from a Sim character. You really <laughs> don't. I, like, go to a convention. You will see Ellie cosplayers. And unless there is, like, a clicker or they have a some explicit like a like, rabbit visual. skin in one yeah, hand <laughs> exactly exactly cider like unless they have that you're not going to know who they are like that oh geez how right awful this is. there's no easio this is a crime yeah that's a really good point Picado. like a sat oh. like an assassin is not there as much as i don't like those games those games are huge they obviously they keep going right like people know what an assassin it got a movie it, it, it got a movie with Michael Fassbender. It was awful. It's probably one of the worst things I've ever watched, but yeah. they got, it got a movie. Methinks a Blind Man wrote this list. So here's my take on this disaster that we just went over. I think that on one hand, it shows that Brit, like the respondent, anybody who responds to a BAFTA poll, like a big poll like this, doesn't really... There's Blame probably a is. handful... Of, <laughs> right, exactly. Like There's a, probably a handful of people who did for like like you know laughs but it's probably mostly just social media users people who know the discord all that sort of stupid stuff that's why it's all um more recent characters i i don't think that that's one of my problems with this list is that it only pulled four thousand people because i know off the top of my head where is the slime from dragon quest where is mega man ryu chun li uh, let me, let me push back just a real sub zero quick. <laughs> are, are we sure that these are like actual people like are, are we mm -mm. sure that no i'm, I'm not talking are, about like, the biden voters that's no the... no I, I don't mean in the context of are these people bots i mean if you actually voted for like laura croft are you actually a human being like, that... <laughs> <laughs> no that that that's npc programming come to life but sort of to that end so this is where i'm gonna we're I'm going to start leaning into pure speculation. What I like, I'm going to put on my tinfoil hat because what this list signaled to me is there is now 
for some reason, or how do I put this? They voted like Laura Croft is put number one on this list because they're trying to revise history where, you know, for years we had Laura Croft is sexist. Laura Croft is awful. Nobody should look like this. Every like get her off of our screens. And then in recent after that all died down, recent years have seen people go, oh, you know what? Laura Croft is cool. Tomb Raider Remastered comes out and every she looks the same as she used to. And everybody goes, yeah, never mind. We like this character. Yeah, uh, it's it's the sexy character cycle of the mainstream press mainstream audience right we've seen it with bayonetta we've we're starting to see it with stellar blade we wow, saw she wasn't two, even two, on this list yeah no Whoa. bayo wasn't on here 2b wasn't on here like i also i honestly would have put 2b on here at like 20 at at minimum because people know who 2b is you're right but whenever any game comes out with a sexy female protagonist it always starts with this is gross. This is disgusting. You're all misogynists. To over time, as people start ignoring that argument, they start trying to reclaim that character and go, oh, no, that character being sexy is good. It's just bad the way you're looking at her. She shouldn't be looked at like men. For it's that. just the male gaze. That it is literally her. that, Josh. Like, <laughs> uh, Ash Parrish of The Verge, who, as you all might remember, just a couple weeks ago, wrote of that course. awful. Uh, Cabrutus hit piece on Sweet Baby Ink Detected where she admitted, I'm not going to, you know, provide the full story because it torpedoes my narrative. She was on Twitter like last weekend talking about, oh no, Bayonetta is totally for women. Like she's she's so empowering and sexy. And it's like, you guys didn't say this at the beginning. Like get the hell out of my face. Bayona Rad is actually bringing up Joanna Dark. So it's like from the yeah. Dark. Uh, Joanna Dark. It's, a, it's also, it's a, I, I don't know if Samus. it's more iconic than, than Lara Croft, but at least just bring her in. <laughs> well, you know, See, and the eccentric man Ellie. brings up a very important character is uh, Carmen Santiago. <laughs> Uh, Carmen San Diego's little known uh, car insurance salesman, saleswoman <laughs> cousin. Very important. 15 minutes or less with Carmen Santiago can save you a bunch on car insurance. Remember when they took down Aaron Esurance because Esurance found out that like everybody was drawing inappropriate pictures of her? Yeah, that was like a real quick one where they were like, why did we get the busty saleswoman again? Like, what? Who thought oh. that was a good idea? Yeah, like and a cartoon one. No, no, no. We've we've got oh, to go. We've got to get a human. Uh, well, the, the, well, eccentric banana is also bringing up Samus, and I'm like, bro, do you remember like at the ending of the first game when she actually takes off her clothes and it's like oh, yeah, oh, the armor, you, and she's like wearing the, like, like switching, well, depending on how you did, she's wearing like a bikini or whatever, like a so, yeah, yeah, so progressive in the eighties or whatever, and well, and then yeah, over here. time it became oh, this is disgusting. Gamers only wanted to see her naked, and now it's she's she's the best whatever she's she's a female icon so i think right. that's what's happening with tomb raider now you know we we they with the release of tomb raider remastered last year and everybody going yeah we don't really care about all, all your arguments we like this laura croft and we're we're going to support it now they're trying to do the uh you know shout out to everybody over at the uh, at the dicks division comics division uh culture casino all those guys they're trying to do the jennifer lawrence thing the jennifer lawrence award where they go oh no 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 Oh, we were yeah. always first here to, to herald how great Laura Croft was. We've always been recognizing her when in reality, it's like, no, you absolutely want like work. Well, so to me, I feel did, like it's a narrative game. <laughs> we did get some news about Tomb Raider going forward. Uh, Laura Croft's yep. iconic uh, profession will no longer be such. Uh, yes, apparently guys. the Tomb Raider will no longer be raiding tombs and instead now raiding the truth. Yeah, so if you guys didn't catch this, uh, I just published an article on it. Uh, Tomb Raider Chronicles broke the news yesterday. So there is a new tabletop RPG coming out, Tomb Raider Shadows of the Truth. And the game is essentially a Tomb Raider themed D&D. You know, you have character classes, you go on adventures. And because of the setting, obviously, and the source material, the core element of the game is going out and exploring the world and raiding tombs, if you will. So... Obviously, we all know that in recent years, we've had all the discourses about, you know, Indiana Jones, Laura Croft taking artifacts. Do we give them back? Blah, 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 blah. In service of that discourse, the tabletop RPG book explicitly has a section where they confirm that, like, Crystal Dynamics, the, the developer that currently owns, or not owns, but is in charge of the franchise, they're actively working to sort of make up 
for the game's quote colonialist past. Uh, what that means in the, in this particular story is that there is a blurb in the guidebook that has uh, it, it's sort of a mea culpa. It, it really just reads as uh, you know, Laura, we know Laura Croft was problematic, but now Crystal Dynamics is working to make this a a a setting where you can talk about stories of colonialist themes and and all of that sort of stuff. And what Cider was saying is that your objectives in these missions or or in these you know the pre-assigned modules, if you don't want to make your own campaign, is not finding treasures or raiding tombs per se. It's finding the truths and unlocking the mysteries and all of that sort of. It, it, it's just, it's not, not like part of the lore. It's just, we all know what you're doing here. Or what am I trying to say here? Right? Like it's tomb raiding with more steps. Yeah. It's, it's tomb raiding with more steps. It's tomb raiding with virtue signaling. Honestly, that's right. all it is. Like uh, again, any, any instance where somebody feels the need to have to beat you over the head with something we all sort of understand is, you know, not the best thing in the world that is virtue signaling. I, I I will point to the recent the Tomb Raider remastered collection for all for how great it was and how accurate it kept everything. There's that disclaimer at the beginning that says, "Oh, these cultural depictions are offensive and if taken out of context, you know, blah blah blah." And it's like we all know that we're not dumb. We all know that you don't go around depicting all black people as tribal people. Like so, you doing that is just you trying to get attention to yourself for. Look how proud, like, look how great we are. We're, we're the best, rah, rah, rah. And I want to, like, bring this link up because this is something a lot of people have missed in the story. Cider, there is a link in this story um, where uh, it, it is, uh, the. it's like, it's a second paragraph, like, like right under here. Uh, Thirsty sword lesbians, click that. So if you guys uh, don't remember. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, I, I linked to our coverage. Don't worry. Uh, Ooh, all right, so, you got me there. You, so uh tomb Ra the tomb raider game is being made by this company called evil hat productions and they are uh, an independent uh tabletop rpg publishing company they uh if you guys don't know their regular wares you might recognize them from this game thirsty sword lesbians where it is the most like i i haven't even been like it took me forever to even try and find a word to describe it in my article because it's just like like, like, bear with me, folks. It's, 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 you know, screw you, mom and dad, like incarnate the book, right? Like yeah. I'm trying too hard to rebel. If, yeah. if you go check out the coverage, you know, it's all about, this is a queer love story game, not for you gross transphobes and turfs. And if you don't like our book, don't buy our game. Or like, if you don't like our politics, don't buy our game. Like it's super you know what? combative you know what? for like I'm just no going to not buy it because it looks horrible. How about it that? Looks awful. This, it looks awful. It looks really bad. That. that just... I so feel looks, insulted looking at this. Like I, just, you see, you know when you walk by like street art and you just want to find the person that did it and just say no. I like, did not give you permission to do that to my <laughs> eyes. <laughs> yeah, it, right, so it's bad. Hold on, hold on. Just, just to make it clear, what what is that that I'm looking at? Is is that two men, two lesbians, two women? What is it? Those are two women. I, I think they, uh, just depending on how you minute. roll, Josh, it, it could be a man, it, it could be a actually, woman. That is actually uh, oh, oh no, I, I wouldn't want to. Are you sure they're not just two drag queens? Is what I thought that they were. Yeah, they actually might be. They actually might be like, yeah, they actually might be considering every descriptor for this game because it is literally just like, like I'm doing mm. this intentionally to make you angry, and give one, me the one on the it. left. Yeah. Specifically, the one on the left looks more managed than He Man in the show. It's intentional. <laughs> it's oh, it's intentional. It, it's got like, like, like all the, the the male features, and I'm like, okay, so if this is how you want to draw women from now on, then I don't know. Well, what am I missing? You you might you might not know this, Josh, because you might not have hung out in those spheres. But like, this is Tumblr. This is what Tumblr oh, does. Oh. This is what all of those sense of right. This is what I'm talking about. Oh. Yeah. So like. Tumblr, Tumblr thrives on the idea, like they, again, they are, you know, screw you mom and dad incarnate the website. Everything they do is because they have some underlying issue they've never resolved. And so they latch onto everything to justify their actions, their beliefs, Tenacles. their inaction, all that sort of stuff. So to them drawing, you know, when it, you see this all the time, 
everything is political. So they make a fat character, they make a black character, whatever. And it's not because they had an interest in making a character like that. It's because yeah. they are trying to be like, not offensive, but like inflame things go like, look, screw you. Ha ha. I can do this. As you like, again, guys, go check out this article. As you go through their like guidebook, it's all Tumblr rhetoric about, you know, like Snyder had up a second ago, like consent and don't bully people. Like it is just awful. Like it, it is so bad. It is the worst hilarious stereotypes of neo-progressivism that you could possibly imagine. And so that is the that's who's producing this Tomb Raider game. Like top evil hat productions is making the Tomb Raider game after making thirsty sword lesbians. So that's, that's where we're getting at, at this point, right? Like you can't have, everything has to like, like I'm, I'm not saying anything profound here. We see it in all of our media. It's just, everything has to apologize for the past, treat it's like it's players or it's customer base, like children and so on and so forth and it's just by, insulting <laughs> by the way that guy right there in your cover is that is a lobotomy haircut from then you see a man in oh, there and you yeah. know he's gonna be like the uh punch uh, yeah, yeah the dot of the joke and all that stuff yes um well, look, like, at, look at the woman on the well, left yes if it is that's a woman and you see yeah. like oh no she's the boss girl but the and she's got like the brood male man toxic masculinity with the lobotomy and male haircut <laughs> so so the well, big guy's gay right that, that, that's pretty yes, much confirmed that's what it is yes yeah. well so so it's funny because uh so so like i said it, it's a it's a tabletop game these four represent like the generic classes that you can pick and the classes that they are is the one on the left is the changed who's like a uh Oh, like she, she has hard... then. All right. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. Hold on. Like, there, there's <laughs> a specific thing to this because I have the character sheets in the article, but you can see, like, the blonde the lady changed. is the change. She has like arcane knowledge, which gives her better insight into everything. Josh, I think you're right. Uh, I think that's a trans. <laughs> that's a man. Yeah, it could be. A trans, yeah. yeah, the changed. The the cut their dick off. Yes. Yeah. It's the change. <laughs> it might be. I would have. I would have to. I didn't even think about that, but I'd have to read the character sheet all the way. But then you have. Uh, the the chick with the the facial uh, paint. She's the hunter, and the one on the the right, the like super generic Tumblr design is the crafter. You know who is really good at you know assembling things. The guy is the companion. That's his character class. He's your. Oh. He is literally the representative for the sidekick character. Like it is not Golden subtle. Retriever. Can, can we all. get? Can, can so, we get a, a poll in, in, in the chat going real quick? I want to ask this question. What is worse, this game or $5 a gallon for gas? That should be our, <laughs> our poll question for tonight. I, dude, Take that's going to be neck and neck. <laughs> um, oh, gosh. No, I forgot. What? Uh, okay. <laughs> but, yeah, that's it, it, it's unsurprising. It's just – oh, no, I, I remember. The, the red flag is so, the character's design on the right. <laughs> Yeah, um, so th there was like this RPG that was developed by the creator. I don't know if it was the creator or the uh, one of the writers for Chrono Trigger that came out recently, like last year. Oh. Is oh gosh, what's the name of the of the uh, of the game? It's, it's an RPG as well. It got like tons of praise. Uh huh. It's it's pixel yeah. art as well. I just I, I don't know what the, what the you gotta give is. you gotta the, give us more than than pixel art RPG. What's the premise? What are we looking for here? Yeah, but no, but Chrono Trigger should probably tell you all you need to know about that. So. Uh, live live alive? Is that what you're talking about? No, 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 no. It's it's a new game. It's not a remake or a remaster or anything. And oh gosh, uh, hold on. I'm 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 gonna look it up. But the thing is that that I don't know if the the, the game is like some kind of like work components to it. But uh -huh. the the fat character in that game has got the same, the very same look as this one right there with the lobotomy male haircut as well. And I'm like, no, I don't think vote. the game is woke. But the thing is that even if you don't realize it now, it's going to be turned into like that sort of like, right? Um, like that look for the character is going to like you know that that's what the aesthetic thing. is going to become right where yeah, yeah where yeah, once right. we had <laughs> laura as as you know even even the newer laura croft the 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 reboot one she's not as like 
like action star sexy as the as the original one but she's still like she's still you know thin she's got her curves she looks she wears her tank top she looks good this is part of that push josh i think you're right like going forward we're gonna start seeing more tomb raider characters with these sort of looks and it was uh i just replied to bayona red here who you know points it out i bet the developers put themselves in these characters and it's like of course they did that's a thousand percent what this is they there's some element of self-insertion there so they can go i'm tomb raider tomb raider is me and we're gonna put the story around me as the tomb raider instead of laura croft as the tomb raider there is literally a section on this about this game where it's like can i play as laura like on the website's faq where it's like can i play as laura croft and it's like no this is like she's her own character you got to go make somebody on your own and it's like interesting very like you're making a an RPG based on a property that specifically focuses on one character and you're sort of abandoning everything about it. There's no Laura, there's no tomb raiding, there's just treating each other nice. I I I bet this system was designed by the people who encourage what is that stupid discussion that's been going on? Like we don't the, you you guys probably saw this on Twitter over the past couple of weeks, but it's like we don't when we play D&D, &D, we don't roll dice. I, I tell them what's going to happen and my players suggest what they think should happen to me. And we, we work out a solution we all like, and it's like, what the hell are you? This isn't, this isn't an RPG. This is a, a weird, like what, like instead of a struggle session, like a validation session, like you go to this to have people go like, Oh, you're great. Like the Evan Hellion style, like congratulations. Oh, you're so great for being a, an overweight tomb Raider. Nothing can stop you. Like that's, it's bad, and we we just got to stop. <laughs> but this is what we do now. We, we empower people instead of just telling people that they stink or they don't do a good job. We just we just give them a hug and empower them like even more. It's like the whole right. like con uh, the discourse this week about that WWE announcer who was crying during WrestleMania when she made the yeah. What was up with her. that? so wrestling fans are just stupid I and mean, i'm pretty sure yeah I'm not yeah yeah anything new but <laughs> it's, it's gotten so bad to the point where now not the people working for the company can't even keep it together and they're like legitimately crying over a scripted like show it's a tv show and they're sitting over there like blubbering like in tears and instead of people just saying hey why don't you try act professional and, and not cry on the biggest show of the entire year and everyone's like, like oh you go girl you're, you're showing emotion that's exactly what we need now and it's like it, it, we're just empowering people to be terrible at their jobs and this yes is we, no we really are like not only do we like encourage them and, and be like oh yeah you're great but then more often than not we promote them like she's probably going to be a regular announcer now and I, I think about baby right exactly like let's go you know J uh what is it jacob and i's favorite like mine and jacob's favorite thing in the world the rick and morty pipeline like that is mm -hmm. the exact oh. you know Fail out of out of freaking Jimmy Kimmel Live and here, write the Avengers movie. Like, what did we <laughs> what did we do here? The, oh no. What? The, of course you're going to go exploring ancient caves with uneven floors and steep drops oh. with, with Oscar, I didn't even... Oscar for a scroll up. Which character is that? Is that <laughs> the, the... <laughs> yeah, black of course character. it is? Because of course it is. Because of course it is. God, both of them. Presentation. I, both of, of them. Good night, everybody. I, I, like, yeah, seriously. Like, what do we do here? <laughs> Check out Mounting into Comics.com. Society Reviews. Cider Height. Josh. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> what, what happened and why did it happen twice? Yeah, yeah right. They, they, they unironically put Tink Tink in the game. Yeah. <laughs> 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 why? What is this? Oh, and no one yeah. else has like a physical right. ailment whatsoever. That's why. Like, when so when you when you were last when you so started no, hold on a second, hold on a second before we go yeah, out yeah. there. So is the implication here that she lost her legs due to diabetes? Is that the implication? That seems to be. That's <laughs> that seems what it is. Lost, she lost her feet to diabetes. Yeah, <laughs> but like no, Cider. Like to your point, like when you started laughing, you only had the the legs down, and I was like, oh, I see him. <laughs> I, I I was like, is it? It's either going to be that character, or it's going to be the the hunter on the other end. And I was like, no. do not, like, do not do it, guys. Like, come on, like, be do better, uh, Crystal Dynamics, do better. And nope, they did not do better. They did not. <laughs> They're like, 
You know who who should have the pig legs? The fat black one with the pink hair streak. And, Let's uh, put all the diversity on hair. that one. It's like it's like Jake, or it's like Josh pointed out. It's a pink hair streak with the um, like there's a lobotomy cut in there. Then you also notice like she has glasses. So like that's not necessarily a dame Yo, against anybody. No, no it's like, shut up, Go Josh. On. I wear them too, <laughs> but it's like you're. It, it's it's one of those elements where it's like you are just throwing everything to, like yeah. at on mm. this like. Mannequin, essentially, like it's so bad. <laughs> Diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's hope that these tombs have like you know yeah, considerations exactly. for handicap. Where are the wheelchair right? accessible tombs? Exactly. We're gonna sue those Mayans and do non-existence. Uh, I, I I hope those little things are durable. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh my god. George, oh, George, I didn't even realize this, guys. A nearsighted archer. Oh, that's what shit, it is. That's right. <laughs> How do you do it? You're going to fling your glasses off with your compound bow. And they're going to go, whoop, like Velma. I can't see anything. I launched I my glasses 200 feet across the tomb. <laughs> so she does have diabetes because now it's affecting her eyesight, too. It's <laughs> She's got glaucoma. A thousand percent, dude. Oh my god. She's got glaucoma and peg legs. Oh, gonna go she's, ready. she's ready to fight everything except for her high blood sugar. Yeah. <laughs> when it's adventure time or dinner time, you know who to call. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Pizza's in a tomb. You know oh. who to call. It's a flat so black bad. fat black girl. And it's like, oh well, there's a, I had another point, but now I totally forget what it is. Oh, yeah, like and again, like this isn't even like D D, right? Where you can realistically say like oh yeah i wear i'm blind as an archer but i have a spell that gives me like perfect like this is supposed to be the real world this is supposed to be like <laughs> happening right outside our doors so good it's, good it's, luck it's, it's, you remember, like, when, when Angelina Jolie was in the movie, they, like, filmed, like, these wet stone surfaces. I don't mm -hmm. think these these metal hooks are going to do too well on that surface, particularly with the center of gravity shifting the way it does on a person. Well, like what, what if she has to, like, walk on, like, mud or quitsand or something? It's, it's like... <laughs> done. It's ab like, yeah. No, like, no. It, 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 no, she grabs her butt plug, she pulls it back, it's like one of those rip cords on the, on the lawnmower, and it just... Oh, they're, they're like little mixers, and that's how she goes across up. the water. She is a crafter, like, that's her entire thing. Like, that's another thing, is that character class, its entire point is like, I can make things, I can make shift things to help me in my adventure. Like, it's... Hey, look, <laughs> if she was in the, the new Jumanji movie... If she was in the new Jumanji movie as the black character that couldn't eat cake, it would make perfect sense. <laughs> oh my god, that would be so funny. So, I would so, I would watch that movie five times. <laughs> the only other character on the on the cover here that's experiencing a disability is Laura Croft's left hand gun, which apparently has had the barrel bent at some point. Oh. Whoa, um, I didn't even notice that. That is really No, bad. no. You see, you don't understand. It's an O2 uh, Angelina Jolie. She's going to curve the bullet. That's, oh, that's, that's right. That's <laughs> the wanted gun that can bend the bullet's trajectory. That's right. Uh, I'm, I, I also I also noticed that she's doing trigger discipline here, which yes. is counterintuitive. Like, good, great. Always, Guys, always remember your trigger discipline. It's very important. But, like, if you're trying to communicate, this is Laura Croft Tomb Raider on an adventure, she's probably not, like, Posing like well, so. Uh, all, right, all right, all right. Just one thing, right? So you, you you were you were talking about that, and you were talking about fingers, and I'm like looking at the whole picture here, and it kind of looks like it was made in AI. Like no one yeah. was involved in it. Because look There's at the, look, look at the fingers of the finger. of the fat yeah. guy. You know, it's just kind of like crossing his arms, and then like the pinky is like twisting. Yeah. In a weird way. It's like, what is what is that? So nobody actually drew this. Well, I, I noticed, look at Laura's right hand, like the, the finger uh, uh, yeah, like on like, the trigger. It's, it's, there's weird, like two right? of them. It's weird. She's I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Weird, yeah. 
Yeah, like, maybe it is AI the, art. Lego got caught using it. The I latest remember, Ninjago yeah, line. That. So that maybe they did. I don't know. But like the thing I want to stress though is they they don't want you like knowing that Laura's going into the tomb without the safety on, right? Mm -hmm. She wouldn't be having unsafe adventures in the tomb. <laughs> you know, she's got good trigger discipline and the safety on going in there because God forbid there's a disaster in the tomb, you know. So. Yeah, th there's no way there's immediate danger. She should always be aware of her surroundings. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, Bayona saw it too. Yeah, th that's a good question. We, we would have to look into it. I would I would not be surprised. Let's just put it that way. Like at <laughs> expressed. <laughs> so, so someone's someone's gonna clip out the so entire bad. segment. Someone's gonna clip out the entire segment of the show and like send it to the developers of this game. We're gonna end up on a list. We're gonna send it to the UN. We are gonna send it to the UN. You know what? I'll request a review copy. I'll see what they. I'll see if they give us mm. one. They <laughs> say, yeah, yeah. Ah, so bad, so bad. There's your Tomb Raider future. Up and down, up and down. At one point, it's cool with Tomb Raider remastered, and then they go and they do something like this. And remember, guys, Crystal Dynamics. I just. I don't. I had nowhere else to interject this, but that's the same developer who did Marvel's Avengers. This is yep. not a developer who is exactly at the top of their game right now. <laughs> and, and, and that was like the thing, right? So before the Avengers game came out, everybody was like, "Oh, don't worry about it. The trailer looks crap." It but so it's, this is the same people that did the, uh, the the Tomb Raider games, and I'm, I was like, I played the first one for like I don't know two hours, three hours, and I was like, not impressed. Well, that was the problem. Everybody went, oh, they did the Tomb Raider games. They're the Tomb Raider developers. And it's like, they are, but they're the reboot developers. They're not yeah. the OG developers. Yeah. Like, they're the ones who did the Uncharted-style games. <laughs> yeah, no, dude, I, I was legitimately crying there at the end, Hayes v and HD. I couldn't handle that. That was incredible. <laughs> you know who else is crying? Who else Everybody is crying? Everybody who wanted this movie to last and be a thing. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Josh, Josh and Jacob, this is all you guys. One because I know Jacob or Josh wrote this article, and Jacob, I think you're the only one here who actually watched it. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, well, I'll, I'll let Josh take the to the lead. Yeah, here take, take the lead, Josh. Know, tell, tell us what's up. Tell us what's happening. It up for you. Right. So the, the thing about the the American Society of Magical Bleeps, I suppose I already <laughs> ruined the thing though because. I you can say that. it. You're black. You can say it. I'm a Magical quarter black. Neighbors. I can, I can, I can like that read counts. like three letters of that word. True. Okay, the American that's society true. <laughs> of magical Negroes runs out of magic and is pathetic theatrical run three weeks after the debut. So basically, what happened was nobody showed up to the movies except Jacob to review it, not to watch it, not because he wanted to. There was literally was one like, other person in my entire theater when I saw this movie. <laughs> one. And that was the, yes. that was the janitor. Singular. <laughs> Wait, was, the person, was, it, was the person laughing at the movie? Is it a comedy? Is it, what is it? It's a comedy now. <laughs> oh, yeah, funny. Now, now is the comedy. I'm not sure if they, they meant it to be a comedy in the first place. So uh, for those of you guys who don't remember, uh, one of the chuckle fucks who was on The Daily Show decided to make his own movie. And it was basically a movie essentially about his life. And he got the worst possible actor in Hollywood to play uh, himself, Justice Smith, who, oh, yeah. like I said, it, it, he is basically Justice Smith and, and Seth Rogen at this point. Like they're, they're right next to each other. Like Seth Rogen has him beat because he's been around a little bit longer, but he, he's climbing up there pretty quickly as far as my most disliked yeah. actors in the game goes. And it, the, the film, it, like I said, of course, is, is race baiting uh, one on one. The whole concept here is that, you know, black people are trying to keep white people comfortable because when white people are uncomfortable it's black people who get killed right because that's that's a reflection on reality right <clears throat> uh, but but te tell us how you how you actually measure the levels of discomfort oh you you measure based on white tears <laughs> so you have you have this um uh, another fat overweight black woman here who's supposed to be i guess the representation of god within this uh magical negro society no and, no you're lying you're making that up no, no i'm not lying at all context. you're taking <laughs> that out of the context there's no way no i'm oh, not boy. Up. god Nicole I'm, I'm, is I'm, god 
Yeah, so here, here's the thing. So in this little uh, society here, all the magical Negroes have like uh, uh, like a collective ability, right? So if one of the Negroes act up, then it throws off the entire collective. So she likes to enter the room in like grand style as if she's like floating above everyone like she's God. But when one of the Negroes screw up, she has to like sit down on like this giant chair. And it's a big chair, obviously. But she sit down yeah. in this giant chair because she can't float above uh, everyone. And she has she's to like, walk towards it. I saw that yeah. scene and I was like... I mean, it's funny, but for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, there, there, there's, I, uh, there's so much. We'll go ahead. So I, I just, I'm too white for this segment, but I just, uh, <laughs> this is God, apparently. This is God in this universe right there. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> uh, she said that. That's not me being mean. That she said that. Guys, go. This is literally Jacob. It reminds me of what we were talking about, or what you were talking about on Sunday on your Bible Lens podcast about the Beyonce religion. How yeah. It, like, <laughs> it, oh, it yeah. is a doozy. It is a freaking doozy. Like, I need to go I, back I, I to being one of the, quiet. Go, if you go watch that episode, there, I, Jacob knows this. I had a moment where I, an exact moment, where I was like, no, shut up. This isn't real. Like, you're messing with me. Hey, like, well, you, well, you literally said, like, what the hell is this? Like, yeah, is this yeah, like, I was like, what the hell? Like you, like what is happening? It's go watch the episode. It's great, guys. But yeah, that's but by by the way, that episode it. is now in, in the course of two days my highest viewed Bible lens episode. Really? Ever. Oh, so, dude, yeah, that awesome! Congrats, blowing man. up a lot. Uh, I mean, obviously, so. you've, you've been making progress. You're a great host. You got great topics. But it's probably that Sunday shift too. That's probably really helping yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, I think that's. I, I mean, a lot. we're two weeks, we're two or three weeks into it, but I, I that's awesome. No, congrats, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so like I said, this is all it's about you know, re bro. It's time to rename it to Sunday School Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the no, Sunday I, Lens. No, <laughs> nice. my... no, yeah, it's a good, it's a good name. But but yeah, so what was I saying here with the stupidity? Oh yeah, so like magical Negroes, they're all trying to help white people. And then here's the thing: we're supposed to believe that Justice Smith, in the context of the film, is in some kind of heterosexual relationship with this, I guess, racially ambiguous. But I'm just gonna assume she's a Spanish yeah. woman throughout the course of this movie. They have no chemistry whatsoever as a couple because not at one point, not in one second of this film, do you ever believe that Justice Smith is straight? Like at, at no <laughs> point whatsoever in, in this movie so and that's like the, the big pillar of this entire film yeah you get to the the very very end and then it's justice smith where he has this big emotional meltdown about the fact that he, he's 27 years old this is the first day that i felt like i deserve to live on, on this white society and blah 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 and it's no like way. no one's trying to kill you in your art gallery in upper los angeles you twat <laughs> dude okay to that end this is what i was like freaking out about earlier because i know the movie's old and i've listened to your your shows like your movie review your own show bar room everything but i didn't know that th the movie ends guys with like an avenger style tease of there are multiple societies like this because like mm -hmm. At the very end of the movie, it's revealed that the love interest, the girl, the Hispanic girl, is a member of the like magical society of, of like supportive of, of girlfriends, and wives, girlfriends and like... wives or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, supportive girlfriends and wives and stuff. So it's like, okay, so what you're it, it, it's like passing the 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 victim bucks or like the victim buck on it to, to like yeah. women now because it's like, oh, look at how white people have to or how black people have to appease white people. Well, now look at how women have to appease men all the time. And it's just like, yeah. dude, like, we're is that your sequel? Is that what we're really going to do here? What's what's after that? Like intersectional I, it, it, victimhood. Yeah. Oh, it's it's beyond <laughs> intersectional victimhood at this point. It's just like it's victimhood Olympics. Like they all are and trying you, to one up each other. <laughs> and, and, and the problem is that you have to wonder by the end of the movie if this is as supposed to be like an M, M. Night Shyamalan twist or if it's a punchline. Because I saw it as right. a punchline almost. And I was like, this is a bad joke. This is this is not happening. <laughs> Like, like to me, does that does that not undercut the entire message of the film that like, it oh, does. like oh, oh, black people are always so afraid that they have to, you know, a a appease another group. Now they're the ones who are all like everybody is always afraid of. So why should I feel any sympathy for that? Like, what are you doing here? You're trying, you're trying yeah. too hard to come off like a good person. That's literally what it is. <laughs> right. Please tell me we're gonna blow something up. Uh, oh, I that believe sounds like the orca is ready. I yeah. believe the orca is charged and ready to fire.
Cider, man the, the cannons. <laughs> Bro, I just know is that the the charge up sound is the sound of the of the, of the whale. So it's like really? yep. <laughs> oh no, I didn't. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. that that's for so for good. Justice Smith, for, for Justice Smith, I would have loved it a little bit more if we had gotten like the kid blue blowing up the earth. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's just an extra little bit of smite to go along with it. Uh, Josh, before we hop from uh, magical Negroes, <clears throat> tell us about <laughs> the box office. I so, can. Okay. I, I, so the movie, I said it in a in a, in a journalistic context. <laughs> right. So, yeah. I, I know. Uh, so, so, no, okay. I'm so the I'm movie sorry, when, it, when it came out, the the um, box office. Uh, with the, the, right. So the weekend opening for the movie was about one million, just above one million. Right. So, and here's the thing though, because we don't know what the uh, budget for the movie was. Right. But it's, Right, so if if you're making one million on opening weekend, I mean you're still pretty much screwed, right? And after three weeks, the movie just managed to make two point four million. That's it. Oh, that's two point so four. Bad. That is so bad. Two point four bad. million in three weeks. And here's the thing, though. Wow. This is actually this, this is funny. This is interesting. Uh, on weeks on the second week. The number of theaters that the movie was being shown on went from 1,000 to 152 theaters. And it's like, <laughs> come on, man. And that is not even the final nail on the coffin. Because it's like, no, at some point, they kind of announced the studio, Focus Features, announced that, well, we're just going to release the movie on VOD and on digital on April the 2nd. And that's like two weeks after the movie came out. And I'm like, Bro, come on! And look how much look that... how much the movie made in the, like in the last week five thousand mm -hmm. dollars in the last week a million on. on I I, I love one. the the I love the drop off stats there like 77, 60, 50, <laughs> yeah, 84, 86, 84. yeah eighty seven like oh nobody wanted to see it. an average of thirty six dollars per theater that means like three people per theater throughout the entire day or whatever watched that movie. That, that's like, more than so... was in my theater. Yeah, I, was about to, I literally was about to say, like, <laughs> dang, sure. Jacob was at the exception. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I would watch Donald Glover and everything. And yeah, it hates me in HD. Where's Tyler Perry when you. It does. Honestly, it sounds like a premise for a Tyler Perry movie. And it probably would have been far better received because he would have played it up as a comedy rather than some bizarre statement. I mean, I still think back to the the interview, Josh, uh, with the director. Where what did they? Uh, 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 what was that term that they they like convinced Justice? Smith confe that he had been... well, it was a black, uh, white confession or black confession, something like that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, there's this interview. I think it's with uh, THR or Variety, one of those big outlets, and yeah. uh, they're they're talking about like, oh, Justice Smith and the director talk about your experiences with racism in life or whatever, and yeah. Justice Smith is like, oh, I I mean. I, I I didn't re like he's stumbling to find yeah. like something he's trying to, to come up with, with like, right. oh, who is when, a when I, when that I face me racism up. in my 27 years of life I just don't <laughs> oh this time when I don't know <laughs> and and then he was like he was like I he the thing he reached for and grabbed was like oh I guess sometimes my like non-black friends come up to me and they apologize for having you know oh. done something racist to me in the past or something they thought was racist and it's like that doesn't sound bad. That just literally mm. sounds like, hey, I learned better. I, I'm sorry. And then the director goes like, oh, that's racial racial confession. They're putting all that labor on yeah. you. And oh, Justice yeah, goes like, yeah. oh, yeah, that is what it is. I can't believe it. I never realized it until right now. And it's just like, you are all so damn transparent. Like, this is exactly. so, you are reaching it's, so hard. At least lie and make up a story. Right. It's like, yeah, one day I just went to an ice cream shop and they just said, oh, do you want a three pieces of watermelon, you chicken? And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> that is 100% more believable. No one's going to question. That's more believable than Jesse's story. Yep. <laughs> damn, I just want the case of money and all of a sudden, like, we're just <laughs> I'm surprised Tyler Perry hasn't done like um the you know like the scary movies, superhero movies, Gladi. Like, I'm surprised Tyler Perry hasn't done Medea parody movies. I feel like that is, although you know what, I I am not the representative to speak about Tyler Perry culture. I I, I don't know if I can truly grasp uh the cultural resonance of his work. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that man keeps making way too much money. He he lives in like his his house is a town. His, yeah, his house is like a town. Well, yeah, he he bought a whole bunch of well, he bought a whole bunch of land and then built like a, a ridiculous style. Like it's not even in like a home. It's basically a fortress down here here in Georgia. Yeah. And then on top of that, he bought uh the old was it uh Fort McPherson like station, like an abandoned military station. He bought the <laughs> whole thing and basically converted it into his own like film studio as well. So see, like I like. He makes a lot of money. It's insane. I will never be able to explain the phenomena, but Tyler Perry is a very, very, very rich man. <laughs> so he's so rich, in fact, AI knows. Uh, and uh, this is uh, Tyler Perry at Hogwarts. So you go. There's uh... that is that's a lot. That's actually pretty great. I, he he looks kind of good with that hair. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of more terrified by all the student faces in the background. Like what faces? there's some there's are yeah. not faces. They they all look like the creatures from uh the dark crystal or or yes. labyrinth. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, from labyrinth, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was awful. That was terrifying. You're welcome. What, oh, here we go, Jacob. Yeah, this yeah. is what uh Tyler Perry's uh home here in Georgia looks like. Yeah, this it is, is like, like this is, this so is what, Yeah, th th this is what uh wearing a dress gets you in home. It's like <laughs> No, notice there's not like any other like home within like twenty miles of this place. So it yeah, makes you wonder what, I mean. what goes down behind closed doors here in this home, right? A lot, you a lot of eyes it. wide shut parties going on over here. Maybe <laughs> look, look at these two missile silos. Oh, this is where you it. launch uh, two giant robots from, right? You know, see just, that that's his that helicopter pad. Bird. That's, no, that's oh, helicopter that's pad. Sure yeah, yeah right. That mm. you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're not telling me that when an emergency happens, Thunderbird One and Thunderbird Two don't launch from there. <laughs> that, is, okay? that is literally the Tyler Perry school for gifted youngsters. Come on, yes, <laughs> dude. <laughs> See, okay, hey, you, actually, you I'm not even making this up. Here. I'm not even making this up. Like Marvel <laughs> legitimately shoots a lot of their content at his film studio in Atlanta. Like. Quite, so we quite literally de Deadpool movie, the X Men. They yeah. could use his house for for the X Men. <laughs> Let's all, guys on in May when we all go see Deadpool three. We've got to keep our eyes out because I genuinely think Jacob's onto something. <laughs> also, I, I hear you, Jacob. I, I'm going to give one piece of pushback because, like, I hear you on the eyes wide shut thing, and this definitely gives off those vibes. But I also feel like Tyler Perry might be the one feel like Hollywood filmmaker who mm -hmm. kind of just hangs out on his own. Like you go down there and it probably is just like a like a movie theater. Like he's just hanging out. He's playing I, like <laughs> I don't know, man. Giant when, you, when, you, when you link up with like uh, Oprah, I think you're suspect. Let's put it that way. Oh, okay. If you're, if you're, if you're linking up with yeah. if you're linking up with Oprah and going to the Met Gala, I think you're already compromised. Too. Yeah, okay. That's completely I forgot like I forgot that he was that far into it. I always yeah. I always consider him like fringy, but that's I forgot that he's made strides in recent years. So yeah, there's probably something. <laughs> So, uh, how about uh, Tyler Perry in um, the uh, School for Extraordinary Neighbors? <laughs> I how about that. Like, it's awful, and I wouldn't really want to see it. But I also kind of want to see it. Like, I it, it's what we always oh, talk about, right? Yeah. Like, if you're gonna do it, Marvel. Said all out <laughs> it's, it's, it's already been done though but you haven't seen the movie so it's in superhero movie when they have um oh i forget the name of this it's tracy uh, morgan that... yeah tracy, yes, tracy morgan, morgan is yeah, playing tracy morgan the other thing right <laughs> yeah playing xavier yeah to me my <laughs> <The power. laughs> <laughs> you have we got, we got got Nito and the blood. Uh, no, you got you got Maga Nito, dude. Of course. Oh, um, that's who the that's who the 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 adversary of the black men are, right? Mm -hmm. black the men. black men. <laughs> the black men. To me, my black men. Or it's the the X Men, and you do the Wakanda salute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this channel is getting canceled. Oh yeah, this 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 show, we are done. We are, this we episode's getting done. nuked. Yeah. We, 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 we will see you all in like a month when they let us out of Twitter, of YouTube jail. <laughs> so uh, speaking of, yeah, this has nothing to do with jail. Whatever. No worries. But, what uh, are we talking about next? Hollywood yes. thinks you're too dumb for anime. It, they, they really, really do. So 
in case you guys well, if anyone this, knows stupidity it would be hollywood so it might be on trust me here. this gets really 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 stupid like so uh yeah I, this article dropped yesterday it's actually so a month ago the co-director of kung fu panda kung fu panda 4 held a like a q a session on the official discord server for the r kung fu panda subreddit and so in the process of fielding questions, you know, there wasn't anything controversial. It was really just like how, like, what was like it like working on the movie? What was your favorite scene? It was all very normal, basic questions. But at one point, uh, a, a fan asked the director, her name is, uh, what is it again? It is Stephanie Moss Stein. They asked her, hey, what, do you, uh, what is your opinion on more serious like stories in animated movies? And they pointed to like uh, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish as, you know, treating you know, it doesn't have to be for kids. What do you think about that? Could we have more mature stories? And uh, what uh, my or what Stein fired back was, you know, I love, I love it. I, I think we everybody loves more emotional stories. And she pointed to the fact that, uh, you know, look at bookstores. Manga and anime are the stuff that take up all the shelves. And again, like she is, I, I think we talk about this all the time, but. She is not wrong. I went to like a couple months ago when I was visiting family in Los Angeles. I went to the Barnes yeah. and Noble or the Borders at uh, what is it called? Like the Glendale Galleria, and you go in, and the entire bottom floor of that of that store is dedicated to manga, anime, collectibles, like plushies, pins, like they're everywhere. And if you want uh, a, a Western release or whatever, there's a single side of a shelf, not even a t an entire shelf. It's one, like two sides of a shelf in the manga section. Like it's insane. Like, so people clearly, like Stein said, want these sort of stories. And, and it's it, that shouldn't really come as a surprise because if you guys think back to a lot of the stuff we watched as kids, there were a lot of heavy themes in things. I mean, we talked about Fern Gully last week. Um, what Hunchback of Notre Dame is an insanely dark film. Uh, what is uh, Tarzan? gets really dark especially at the end right but we didn't have to put all these disclaimers or worry about offending anybody because we trusted the audiences to be able to handle th the level of reality we were giving them now that's not to say we were going and making like uh you know super r-rated poo blood honey movies for kids but we were able to treat them you know give them a little peek into the real world treat them like they're humans make them feel mature you know we all remember being a kid and it's essentially getting invited to the adult table in, in a way yeah so she goes yeah you know i love them everybody loves them manga and anime is dominating but and then she said quote and i'll just go for the quote here but here's the catch a lot of the people in charge of the finances of making a movie think that audiences don't like these kinds of stories i'm not sure why but every time I've talked to an executive, they've told me that, yes, they totally see the influence in anime or the influence and an impact anime has had on the world. But no, we will not do that. And, you know, from there, she sort of took another swing at the Western in, uh, the Western animation industry. She was like, I she was like, I am super surprised that Spider-Verse got made because it is so different and out there from what they normally want to offer you. Which the are things greatest like, thing that ever happened in the cinema. Yeah, it's, it's the best. Uh, 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 what is it? Academy Awards. the Award age of picture. Aquarius. Yeah, it's the best thing ever. We're, we're finally. <laughs> yeah, the Spider-Man. We're doing the Spider-Man. Uh, oh, my gosh. Hey, it's me and HD mentions an American tale. Yeah, an American tale. Uh, both of them, right? Like both the original and Five Old Goes West get pretty insanely dark. Like especially with the in the first one with the robo like cat showdown at the end like that will give you nightmare stuff but most of yeah, don so that, bluth stuff will give you nightmares oh yeah just, don blue stuff will send you yeah like it'll it'll keep you up at night we're back but so, a dinosaur story is still <laughs> like i that was like the movie as a kid for some reason that i watched all the time like that was my kid movie so yeah the crow I have a stealing the eye of the old man just it makes my stomach like oh, leap no, it, every time it, that happens I, i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure i had to like go out of the room or have my mom like fast forward past those parts when i was like, he's super, super young, scary cause... especially when the dinosaurs are imprisoned by him like yeah. the first i remember crying the first time i saw that i was like <laughs> no let john the goodman dinosaur. eat pie the dinosaur. 
dinosaur. He's fat. You I'm, can't chain him up. He'll die. I'm the baby. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So good. Um. And yeah. Hey, it's me and HD. Land before time was pretty dark. Um. Uh, yeah. Like there, we we had a lot of darker stories as a kid that aren't necessarily brutal and over the top, but they just dealt with heavier things. So, I'm of two like schools of thought on this revelation. Right. One is. Obviously, I think they're just stupid. They are missing just the very obvious facts that are in front of them. Jeez. But more than that, I think, uh, oh, my God, the last unicorn when you're six. Are you yeah, okay? Right. Like, like, that's Guantanamo level I stuff. Like that's I need to call child service. Yeah, I feel like I need to call child services for you now. Like, I, I like we have Golly. to do something. That is absolutely insane, my friend, Dante. Also, hello, <laughs> Dante. <laughs> Jeez, man. You can't just walk into the room and drop that. What is wrong with or watership down? Water I dude, I don't even like watching watership down now. That that, that <laughs> now really that you sucks. know. Yeah, now that now Fern that you Gully. know Fern Gully is another one that gets me. Mm -hmm. And then the the is the island of Nim, something about Nim. That yeah, one. or, or the, the legend of Nim, I think. Legend or whatever, of Nim, yeah. Mouse, I can't, can't do that yeah. now that I know it's the Mouse City experiments. Oh. <laughs> right. Like these things get heavy, and you're just like, woof, I don't know anymore. But in terms of Hollywood and their rejection of anime, I think more Secret. than anything, more than Secret. ignorance, I think it is a willful, like we cannot admit that we are losing. They refuse at all turns to be like, yeah, we're getting beat out. And we see this across the Western entertainment industry, right? Every time a Japanese video game comes out, all of the press craps their pants because it looks like anime. Uh, comic book creators of all stripes, both like indie, uh, Comics Gate, Marvel, DC, just all, you, there are so many creators who just crap on manga because, oh, it's weird, it's different, yada, yada, yada. So big eyes this, big eyes so creepy here's a uh, a riff from the 90s this isn't hacky or anything right guys but it, it is to me this is just like you guys are losing really bad and all the evidence is there but you refuse to take a single ounce of humility and you don't even have to go oh yeah they're winning you don't have to come out with a big declaration you can just start taking inspiration from things and pulling in this stuff like Again, as, as dumb as Spider-Verse's culture and narrative and everything has grown to be, the inherent animation and, and techniques there and the level of seriousness they treat all of the events, that, like, that puts it over the top. That's why it, it exists or, or, like, why we remember it. On the other hand, what are the other animated offerings we've gotten in recent years? Things like uh, Ruby Gilman, Teenage Kraken, uh, Fur to Dad. I know that one's, like, decade old at this point teen but it's titans all very... go teen titans go to the movie was kind of fun i i have to admit you can make fun of me for all you want but like there's some moments in there where i'm like they're at least self-aware i wish we had the old titans back but i was like this is an enjoyable time <laughs> uh but oh brave little toaster dante yeah that one is scary as hell too like bluth yes the rescuers uh snakes had child kidnapping uh like most of the Disney villains too. They meet very, very brutal deaths. I mean, Lion King. It, I, I, it's Macbeth, but you're showing kids Scar throwing Mufasa down into the wildebeest and getting trampled, and then you have Simba doing it again at the very end when he wins. Like kids can handle some level of depth in their media. Not everything has to be super blasé, right? And we see that in the fact that a lot of you know, again. Shown in movies, right? My Hero Academia, Dragon Ball Z. I'm going very Captain Harlock. Here, Captain Harlock, like those these series when they get released, they do gangbusters because they give like really good stories and they treat their audiences with the appropriate level of respect. So adults and kids and everybody are willing to go see it, right? Like when I went to go see Dragon Ball Super uh Superhero the crowd was a mixed crowd of like ages, but it didn't at least on, on its face, nobody felt like they were being dragged there. Right. Like the parents didn't feel like, Oh, I have to go see this movie. The kids weren't like, Oh, this is going to be dumb. I don't care. Everybody had something to sort of enjoy from it because they weren't locking themselves into, Oh, we have to do this specifically for kids or whatever. And I just think that it, it all links back to, they can't take like an L to save their life. And they think we're all done. 
we know that just like look at what we were just talking about with the Tomb Raider thing, right? We know that there are debates to be had over taking artifacts and stuff. We don't need every single interaction with that sort of setting to remind us, hey, are you being a good person? Are you thinking to do that? It's, it's just fiction. stupid. It the is artifacts fiction. aren't even real. You can rate them all you like. You can you can break them, and it's not going to hurt anything. You can put but, soup on them, and it's well, not going to hurt anything in real here's life. The, here's the other thing, Cider, which is something we bring up with Dungeons & Dragons all the time. Every time they make a damn change, this is a, this is a tabletop RPG. You play in the setting, but like you make up your own stories. There, this going through the rule books for this game, they literally have a role that is the dungeon master who guides the story and does everything. So if you wanted to write, you know, you could make a story about stealing everything if you wanted to, or you could make a, your players go through the mystery of retrieving something from the British, whatever. You didn't need the developer to come in there and go, uh, are you guys all playing in the right way? Are you playing with my toy correctly? Okay, goodbye. Like that's what they're doing nowadays. That's what's right. ruining all of these mediums because they're going you have to interact with my video game my card game my comic book whatever in the way i demand you interact with it and if you don't you're clearly some sort of bigot you're clearly being dis like you're clearly trying to start something and it's like no maybe your thing just sucks maybe i just don't like what you're doing and again it, it's all that just miasma of learn to take your damn l's Learn to be like humil, like have some humility for once in your life. It'll pay off more than just doubling down on your well, stubbornness. Yeah. <laughs> meanwhile, and they will say, "How do you smell humility?" How, yeah. how do you, and then, and then that's when Jacob throws a Bible at him and says, "Read it." Like it's a, that's like the first nine chapters. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, in Japan, they're asking, "Hey kids, you want to kill demons?" Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like question mark, and, question mark. Uh, that's yeah, uh, like, you know that's what they're doing. They're they, this is the thing that I've learned because I'm I'm writing I'm trying to write a manga rather I'm trying to I don't know if I'm doing oh, it yeah. right I'm trying to, but I um, like what I've seen so far. <laughs> what what I've learned is that just like Stanley said back in his interview sometime in the '90s is that the key to doing this and doing it right and making it last is telling a timeless truth. When you yes. borrow your stories and plots from the headlines of today, they become aged as quickly as where they came from. So you lean into timeless truth. And he said, what is the timeless truth? He says, the guy gets the girl. Evil is always defeated. Children are always innocent. And in the end, the good guy lives. <laughs> you know, and that's that's... That's it. That's the five timeless truths. That's it. It's timeless truths. Good always triumphs over evil. The guy gets the girl. Children are always innocent. Something, something. Because I'm, I'm sorry, but yeah, I'm yeah. distracted by the cool stuff I'm looking at. And, and Japan <laughs> just does that. Japan says the hero will survive. The children are always innocent because you know if they're not innocent, they're demons. How, when was the last time you had like a like real children being evil? The story. Right, you had a demonic influence acting on light. Ryuki Ryuk was not a; it was a it was a death demon. He was, he was a death he was, god. He was neutral. Yeah, but I, I don't even think he was neutral. He was tempting light to use That's the book. True. Yeah. As soon as you I know. said that, I was like, "Yeah, wait a minute." <laughs> so again, like in in even in their like stories where they're trying to tell you show you a corrupted youth, he is supernaturally corrupted. And so this is again like what they're showing is a timeless truth: children are innocent, evil is always right. defeated. No matter how bad it gets in Dragon Ball, whether how many times Goku has to change his hair color, he always defeats the bad guy. And most of the time, the bad guy realizes he's bad bad and becomes a good guy these and are timeless where, truths and, and you're you're hitting the nail on the head because from there right from those five timeless truths you can extrapolate a lot of different stories that also communicate sort of um wide lessons not like wider audience lessons but things like you know don't blindly trust your government or uh you know people can you know back like there are stories you can write out there from that what i think happened cider is that in we have this uh, insane narcissist culture here in the West, right? Like that we talk about all the time. It's where we, it's how we've gotten where we are with our self inserts and our personal politics being injected or not ours, but like they're like the writers and stuff interjecting their personal yep. politics and everything because so many people have staked sort of like 
I need to be like, I need to make everything about me. I need to define myself. I need to be the bigger, like I need to be the, the story. I'm the story. They go, Oh, I see these truths. Wouldn't it be like, won't I be so clever if I subvert them? Like th that's literally what it is. So that's when you get, Oh, all the heroes are always dying. Oh, all the villains uh, are actually good and they can always, you know, they're never, they don't ever deserve punishment. Uh, the guy never gets the girl because you know, the girl, he doesn't live up to his, I don't know. There's just all that stuff that you see where it's like, there's a reason those stories have worked. The fact that you're trying so hard to subvert it, like that's, that's the difference. Like you yep. can subvert those, those tropes and you can subvert those stories and get something out of them. But when you're trying so hard, like you're, you're throwing everything in there, kind of like with the thirsty uh, sword lesbians RPG, it becomes very, very like fake hollow. We can all, to sort of see it. So, because the problem is not is that it's not that they're trying to subvert it. It's not, the, the problem is that they're trying to rewrite it, and that is the issue, the main issue. That's a, that's like, a that's a better way to thing. reframe it. Yeah, everything right, is yeah. trying to be reframed in their narratives, and we see that all the time, right? It, it's the thing I always personally bring up, which is they will do whatever it is in the moment to support their point. We literally saw that Laura Croft. That's the best example. Most iconic video game character of all time. Everybody loves her. Let's celebrate her. We're going to give her an award on stage at the BAFTA Awards in honor of how much everybody loves her. And it's like, again, for the last 40 years, or what has it been, like 20 years, most most of the people now cheering were cr like crapping on her for being attractive or were crapping on fans for enjoying her attractive design. It's all about how do I win right now in the moment? And because they don't think about how any of their actions might affect anything else, it everything else that stems from there gets ruined, right? Like let's we we can look at Ryan Johnson if we want to go like really deep on this one. Do like I have to? Ryan, we it's it's a, just it's just a bet it's the best example. It's just it's the okay. easiest one, right? So in Ryan Johnson's thing, he went and he looked at everything in Star Wars and he blew it all up essentially, you know subvert this trope luke's a, a crybaby now he almost kills kylo force dyad whatever blah 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 he only did that to go yes i want this movie to pit like i want this to be controversial there is a, a a clip of ryan johnson from like his early filmmaking days where he's like i would rather make a bad movie that's controversial and people talk about than a good movie that just you know goes by the wayside and it's like that is a very 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 dangerous mentality to get into because that is again it, he's not saying i'd like to do something i really like and if it courts like controversy oh well he's saying like i would much rather piss people off than yeah. try to give them a genuine effort so like it's like in that see what go ahead Josh. no it's, it's like the same thing <laughs> with, uh, with, with zach snyder though because he kind of went mm -hmm. like well in my in my batman movie batman would get raped in prison or whatever and it's like you weren't listening i know that within our sphere lots of people actually like the snyderverse i don't hate I the know. movies i actually like all three of them <laughs> but it's like uh yes we should have you know paid attention to all of those red flags because that's that was right the issue. that was the problem like, like I, I still to this day think like I hate the bat branding thing. Like I will never. That's oh, not yeah. Batman, right? Like that is yeah. just that is that that's like edgy so, Batman. But, so, so, so that's <laughs> the thing though, because if he was branding them, but he but nothing else happened, fine, whatever. Just do is you're being you, you're being Batman, whatever. But once you know that everybody who's branded is getting killed in prison, yeah. it's like all right, maybe I should stop doing that. <laughs> Right. Like I, I can get it like once or twice you think it's an effective thing and then you learn like, oh, that's not yeah. working. That's bad. I stop. But no, he goes, let's keep doing it. Let's keep doing it. You're still killing. Right? More, more, more branding. More, more branding. The branding will continue until morale improves. <laughs> Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. But you're but like, that's a really good example, too, Josh. Like. With with uh you know Ryan Johnson with Zack Snyder they blew up you know they did their subversions they did their things and they didn't really think about how that affects the rest of what's going to come next how does that affect the next story beat how does that affect like the franchise as a whole they just went mine I did it and now we all have to clean up the mess and if you don't like what they did you are a persona non grata like again that that's not limited to those two either it's any. Anybody who gets criticism these days, like I, I just 
now I'm now I'm completely swerving, and I'm gonna I, I'm about to go into a rant about taking your L. I got you, I got you, bro. I got you. We got it right here. I went deep. I found it. Here we you go. You did it. CEO Bob Iger pushes back against critics like Spencer, who claim that in, they're infusing <laughs> messaging as a sort of number one priority in their film, Spencer. And they're totally not doing that. TV shows, it's not what wrong. they're up to. So, you know, Bob said it to you specifically, obviously. <laughs> Honestly, he it kind of feels like he was trying to call us all like our sphere out like directly. So this is I this is like an insane statement. I it, we'll get into it, but look, I'll, I'll just break it down at first, and then we'll we'll freak or I'll I'll rant about it, or we'll all talk about it rather, because I it's a lot. Well, so or go before ahead. we do that, we should say good night to eccentric banana. He's headed out. And we, good night, my we friend. We did get a super chat a little while ago. These are wands from uh, the good place oh, of wow. Best Korea. These are wands from Best Korea. <laughs> we have 2,000 won from Diz Wiz. He says, I miss John Stream starting soon music, Hardwire. I don't even remember. Did we have a, yeah, a we did. starting soon? Back when we had oh, a man. starting soon uh, segment at the beginning of the stream. Hey, if you guys want the uh, starting stream, uh, stream starting soon um <laughs> thing back uh, uh let us go yeah. in the poll i'll put it in the poll we'll... yeah we'll definitely bring it back i i think i never noticed that it was up because i was always in the back getting like working with you yep. guys to like go live so uh yeah no we, let us know we'll bring it back <laughs> but back to our good old friend bobby so as you all may have no heard last week the proxy board battle for D uh disney's board of directors came to an end it, this is a very, very extensive story. It is very long. Uh, I offered this disclaimer on my show last Friday, but I, it's probably more appropriate to do it on bounding since it's bounding related. You guys might have noticed there is a lack of specific coverage on the board battle. The, the reason for that is twofold. One, uh, it is a dense as hell story that has a lot of digging into and research and linking back through legal documents to get into, which would take up a lot of time that I could spend, you know, breaking news about like Activision or Bobby here. And two, that story was start like when that story broke and it was coming out, it was being covered by John while he was still here. When he left, that sort of left us in a like a gap. And none of us really had the situational knowledge to sort of jump in with a good time frame. So that nobody called us out on it. I just wanted to be transparent and be like, that's the reason it's it's not all up there. But yeah, so the long short of this entire battle is that uh, a activist invest investor Nelson Peltz and the former Disney CFO Jay Rasulo were petitioning shareholders of Disney to essentially vote them into two seats on the Disney board of directors. Their goal with this campaign was to right the Disney ship, right? Not only, you know, save their business practices, but also save their content, get away from all the messaging, so on and so forth. It was a long, very long, arduous battle. If you want the full details, it, like a very good, succinct breakdown from somebody who actually knows everything, Valiant Renegade, shout out to him, friend of the channel, friend of a lot of us. He has been on this story since day one. He knows exactly what he's talking about. He's got lots of good videos on it. But essentially, at the end of the day, after months of, you know, essentially like political campaigning there were ads there were television yeah. appearances like it, it got crazy like there were newspaper ads who reads the news nelson peltz put out a newspaper ad with like disney stats in them that's ins what where are we anymore what is this 1982 but for all of the bluster for all of the fighting at the end of the day disney narrowly managed to avoid the addition of peltz and uh rasulo to their board meaning disney for the foreseeable future is keeping on, keeping on with its current board of directors. Iger is staying around. There is no counter voice in the room right now. So that's where Disney ended this entire debacle last week. A, a big win for Disney. Nelson Peltz has said that he's going to keep an eye on the situation. And if they don't write this, if they don't shape up, he's going to come back with more. So the story might not be completely done to that end. After all this news came out, the or Iger went on the on CNBC on the show. Oh my gosh, what it, it uh, they have like nine different shows. Um, 
money talks, I think it is, whatever. He was talking to CNBC's David Faber and Faber, you know, he's talking to him about all the company's future now that uh, Pelts and Rasulo are not a factor. So blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and amidst their discussion, uh, Iger was eventually asked about uh, you know, how do you feel about the criticisms of your like your content being woke, especially from bigger individuals like Nelson Peltz and, you know, Elon Musk, who we all we all know at this point has been very vocal in his criticisms of Iger. So in response to that, we got I like I'm just going to quote it and we're, we'll get because like I, I don't even know what to say about it. So faced with this question, Iger responded. Uh, people have quote, people have been coming after me and the company for years. And it's just, I don't get distracted by those things. Uh, met with pushback who's, um, who's, uh, from, uh, Fa from Facebook who said, you know, the woke thing has had an impact though. You can't just really ignore it. Like people are talking about it. It's clearly drawn attention. Iger fired back quote, um, or, or he said, you know, the woke thing has had an impact. You've said before you wanted to get out of the culture wars. Are you doing that? What's your progress on that? And Iger comes back and says, quote, well, I think, yes. I mean, I think the noise has sort of quieted down. I've been preaching this for a long time at the company before I left. And since I came back, that our number one goal is to entertain. I think, but the term woke is thrown around rather liberally. No, no pun intended in that regard. I think a lot of people don't even understand really what it means. The bottom line is that infusing messaging as a sort of number one priority in our films and TV shows is not what we're up to. They need to be entertaining. And look, we're the Disney company. If we can have an impact, a positive impact on the world, whether it's, you know, fostering acceptance and understanding of, you know, people of all different types, great. But generally speaking, we need to be entertainment, an entertainment company first. And I've worked really hard to do that. End quote. No. Like I, no. this is, I, I don't, I don't know how far we can like, in my uh, personal here's... opinion, not of the site. Like this is a bold faced ass lie. Like what the hell? So, I mean, here, here's, and we've talked about this before, but this is kind of the, the dilemma that Disney's in right now with this whole situation. It's that you, we have to remember at the end of the day, they're a publicly traded company. So they have to watch every single word that they say. So essentially they cannot give an inch of inkling that something may be awry with anything that they're doing in the company. Because as soon as they put that out there, that stock price is going to, they're going to lose billions of dollars in value. Right. And that Bob Iger is probably going to be out of a job. That's what it really comes down <laughs> to at the end of the day. So the, this every time Disney makes a, a statement from quarter to quarter with these uh, stockholder yeah. meetings and stuff, they always has essentially in, in the pro wrestling sense kayfabe what's actually kayfabe going it. on, right? Just can't make, you have to keep like like fake it to you, make it type situation, which means that they have to absolutely lie to you and BS you. We all know what's going on, but they can't admit to that because, like I said, if they say the wrong things, their stocks are going to go down, the price is going to go, it's going to be an absolute mess. So they have to pretend like oh everything's going great with like the MCU even though it's clearly not going great with even the MCU, it's not. right? Yeah. And, it, and then even when they do admit it, it has to be like some kind of like vague response of, oh, you know, I think we're just putting out a little too many shows. We'll cut back and focus a little bit more on quality and then things will improve, right? Echo! That, <laughs> that, that, that false optimism of, oh, don't worry, yes. we understand there's a problem, but it's going to get better. And then it doesn't actually get better at all. And the problem with these meetings is that no one actually holds the, these companies' feet to the fire in the sense that they make the, these promises from like quarter to quarter. Nobody ever says, well, you know what? In 2021, you said this was going to be happening yeah. and this has not improved in, in, in four years. So are you guys doing anything to address this? Are you noticing the problems getting worse? No one's going to sit there and ask questions like that because they know better. And so, and this no, is just what we have here. I like, I, I totally agree with that sense of like, you have to have the kayfabe and you have to promote everything. My, I guess my like bafflement comes in the fact that he said, you know, I think the noise has quieted down and I think I have gotten us out of the culture wars because, and this is the same sort of bafflement we all, I, we sort of always end the stream on or when we talk or when we have the stream, I sort of always get to this point, which is like, you would think that everybody can see that Iger is full of crap. Everybody can see that you are not trying to get out of the culture wars. We can all see that you're still very, very, very much in it. I mean, you're still doing all your race swappings. We literally just got this. Iger gave this interview the same day that they announced they're doing the female Silver Surfer instead of Norin. Like, it's clearly all still happening. We know that 
uh, Leslie Headland's Jedi series is full of like female empowerment, questioning what's good, what's mm. not. Like all of this stuff is still there. So what I guess I get hung up on is like, who is buying this? And I guess is it is it really just like the yeah like the, the, the talking head stockholders? I guess, but I but even to that end, like I know that you know there are a couple stockholders in our sphere. Lorena Creole, shout out to her, my girl. I know she's one of them. There, uh, what's her the the girl who like was she as a teenager she transitioned, but now she's not, and she's an activist against it. Like Chloe something, you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, Anybody? Sarah, I'm saying what name was called Chloe. She, what she, uh, Chloe something. I don't remember her her last name, but she's like she's got like black hair and braids, and she was a girl who thought or like was convinced by her like school or something that she was trans and started transitioning, and then she stopped. It, it sounds and, familiar, but I'm having yeah, some connection. Yeah, I, 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 oh, I Chloe guarantee Cole, the chat. Says. Yeah, Chloe Cole. Oh, that's okay. who it is. Thank you guys. Yes, yes, Chloe Cole. Like she's a stockholder, and I know that the uh. During the last stock or during this meeting where Bob came or Bob won the board seat battle, there were a lot of questions from shareholders like Chloe was one of them being like, what are you doing about this messaging? What are you doing about this? Like, every, like people are becoming aware. And I just I again, I it, it's that mystery of like logic dictates that if everybody is becoming aware of all this bull crap. And it's clearly hurting it. And that's not just like a niche opinion anymore, guys. Like that's no. not just us sounding the horns. Like it's not just Jacob. It's not just Cider or me, anybody. Like it is a mainstream opinion. I go to things like, have gotten family... so bad. Even yeah. the normies are noticing now. Yes. Like I go to family functions or whatever. And my family who does not really care about the behind the scenes of the entertainment industry know that Disney is failing. They ask me like, can you explain what's happening? This is a mainstream thing. So I guess I'm just in that spot of like, why, how do you keep winning then? Why do you keep failing upwards then? And I know that there's no real like answer anybody can give me because there's all, we know that there's, you know, the, the corporate politics and the BlackRock money and, and all of this, you know, government subsidiary, like subsidiaries. There's a lot there, but it's just it, when when life goes so counter to what you like is logically expected. I don't know. It's just I, I need some time to process it. <laughs> yep. But yeah, I like I just Iger is not a good he's not been a good leader for Disney. This is a very, very, very transparent statement that I think, and, and that's another thing too. Like if everything comes out, that's coming out, like all their animated movies, Captain America, Brave New World. If there is even the slightest amount of messaging in any way, there, this, this statement gets thrown right back in his face. Like public, like I will throw it back in his face. I will run a headline saying, despite claim that they had exited like culture wars, Disney's Captain America Brave New World sees Sam Wilson join a BLM rally. I, I don't know if that's what's going to happen. That was just a hyperbolic thing. But uh, like, it's just Bob Iger is not doing great over there. And I, I yeah, Pelt should have won a seat. And, and somewhere what, Bob Chappick is, is sitting on his lawn chair right now, just the, the coolest oh, Chappic, cup of like uh, 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 Shirley Temple you could possibly drink in your entire Chappic life. Is, Chapp, Chappic is so stoked right now. He's like, I don't mm. have to do any of this. You have to clean up my mess. I don't have any interest in coming back to Disney. I'll nope. see you guys later. Like, <laughs> It's like your problem now. Click. That's, a, that's 100% what it is. He's like, all right, you want this? All yours. Like mm -hmm. he, it, he, uh, he did the thing where it's like, uh, oh yeah, the car is in perfect working condition, and and you, you know it's only got five thousand miles. And then you go back to the dealer, and it's like, oh no, like, no take backs. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no take backs. It's like, oh, this has two hundred thousand miles. He just messed with the odometer. You're mm -hmm. like, damn it! Like that's a hundred percent what's going on. <laughs> but yeah, guys, I think with that we uh, we've gone over again. We've been we've typically been doing that these last couple of streams for good reason because we've been enjoying our conversation. But with that disastrous look into the future of Tomb Raider, into Bob Iger, into the future of the magical society of friendly individuals. Now, by the way, what? by the way, you, you, just, you just messed it up. And I just, I've been writing so many, like, the, the, the name of the movie. Right, I've been it's the American. So many times. Oh, right. I keep. I keep messing that up and I keep writing the American Society of Magical Negroes. And I'm no 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 wait wait hold on the That's the, the right magical one. That's society the right one. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, the the, the, right, the magical society of American Negroes, and I'm like, <laughs> you switch oh, up that sounds <laughs> in, sounds even more racist than it already does. Right, <laughs> like, right. God. It, that I mean that 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 will be that's not going to be the sequel because clearly the sequel is going to be that uh, girlfriend's one, but that will be the Peacock oh, spinoff yeah. series. That they'll yeah, about yes. it. Like, it's I the guarantee- how, I met, how I Met Your Dad in I, I, Peacock. I I unironically would rather watch the movie They Them than to sit there and watch Magical <laughs> Negroes again. And if you guys don't remember that movie, he was not a fan. Go read his review. <laughs> Like that is condemnation. But, but you know, the, 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 even huh. with that film, like yeah. I didn't hate it up to a point. It you was didn't. like that, that is actually true. And then it just completely fell off a cliff. And I was like, you know what? Fuck this movie. Well, because like if I remember your review correct correctly, you're like, the movie starts out like, okay, yeah, obviously it's like a gay summer camp, so that's there. But the focus yeah. is it, it starts out like a normal horror film. And then, like halfway through, they go way well, into here, left field. Pun intended. The, the biggest flaw with the film is that it promotes itself as a slasher movie, and then you get about an hour and ten minutes in, and you realize, oh yeah, we haven't actually killed anyone yet, but they're all gay and transgender, so we can't <laughs> kill them. So we'll just kill the camp counselors in the last five minutes of the movie, so that way people don't kill uh, sue us for false advertisement. Disappointed. It's just like the uh, oh man, I was gonna damn, I lost the reference now because I was so obsessed with the you welcome. Sorbo. <laughs> damn you, cider. Uh, damn, what was I gonna say? It doesn't matter anymore. With that, guys, yes, we will wrap it here tonight. Before we head out, I will give everybody a chance to let you know what they've got going on. Starting as always with my man Jacob. What have you have? What's oh uh, yeah, plate? so as I mentioned earlier in the stream, last Sunday's episode of the Bible Lens is the highest viewed one that we've done so far. It's blowing up right now, so go check it out. We talked about sin in the black community and the black culture, and surprisingly enough, I haven't got a lot of hate uh, comments about that one yet. I pissed a lot more people off about my review of Monkey Man uh, this week, so apparently uh, yeah. the, the Hindus were a lot more uh, upset with me than, than the other people, but we'll get to that uh, later on. This uh, Saturday, we're going to give you uh, uh, we're going to be recording our second part of our Nickelodeon series. We're going to be doing Nickelodeon live action shows on Saturday. So that should be a pretty fun one. And then uh, hopefully you guys will see bits and pieces of that over the next couple of weeks. I got uh, a, a Bible in. So I'm going to be recording with uh, TWRP here in the next few weeks as well. And then we got one this uh, Sunday coming up at um, I think it's like 7 p.m. On, on, yeah, su- on Sundays, I should say. Yeah, just in case I was a little bit confused there. Uh, <laughs> Sundays at 7 p.m. And then uh, Barroom Podcast. Uh, check out last night's episode. We had a pretty interesting conversation about several things. So there you go. Always a good show. Yes, absolutely, guys. I highly recommend, as always, check out his stuff. I watch it all the time, uh, except for when my streams go long. But yes, great content. Mm-hmm. Go subscribe. Follow him on Twitter. And then, yeah, uh, if you're curious about his Monkey Man f- uh, feedback, Cider has clipped that. It is on the YouTube channel. Go check it out. It's from their Monday Rewind stream. It is pretty hilarious, to be honest. Uh, Cider, our our resident uh, tokusatsu assembler, apparently. Our our new team uh, uh, creative. I don't know. I have no idea what I'm saying. I like the intro. What have you got going on, my friend? You'll see it again in a minute. Don't worry. (laughs) But uh, we have Tokyo Happy Hour tomorrow at uh, 9 p.m. right here on this same channel. Not quite as exciting of an intro yet. We're working on it. But right now, it's pretty chill. We want to, like, hang out with Nerdigans and I. We're going to be talking Gundam's 45 years anniversary with good old Spencer here, the EIC of Mecca, in fact, the (laughs) editor-in-chief of Mecca. Uh, not not the place that everybody prays if you're Muslim, Inside. but giant robots. <laughs> giant robots instead. That's right. It's 45 years of Gundam. That's right. The white devil that plagued the Zionic forces as they dropped colony after colony on known uh, human settlements on the planet Earth, the poisoned planet Earth. Uh, We'll be going into that. And G Gundam is apparently going to get some type of revival, either a uh, little mini movie or perhaps a whole new series. A new character has been revealed, or at least some type of uh, additional character has been revealed. We'll be talking about that. Like I said, Spencer will be there. So we'll see you tomorrow for Tokyo Happy Hour on Thursday to discuss Gundam. And don't forget, the Gundam in Yokohama is gone now. I know. I at least I, I luckily got to see it when it was still around, but like I can't believe they they're getting rid of it. I don't even why did they even move it? Do you know off the top of your head? 
I think the like the rental like it's that's oh, very really? very expensive property. That's, like is, Sunrise can't yeah. just park there. That's like <laughs> you know, especially especially not after they gave all their money to the Cowboy Bebop adaptation, right? That's where they spent right. it all. So now they had to cut their lease, <laughs> right? And so that I think that I think the other thing is is that robotics, thanks to AI, has just leaped forward so fast that they're in the process of building a whole new unit like, that yeah, may up, not need the. They may not need the cradle anymore. It may be able oh, to independently man. move. I didn't even think about that. I would be so in to see that. I, you're right. All right, y'all keep our eyes on it because yeah, I'm super curious about that. Josh, amigo, what have you got going down in the good old South? Yeah, I got uh, the world, America. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, wrong South. <clears throat> it's it's one of those. Yeah, I got I got nothing. We'll ju we'll just see what I can come up with. Nothing. <laughs> okay. Nothing is. Right, the order of the day. Boo. Well, boo, boo, boo! I will give a shout out. I, you know, he he won't speak for himself, but I will give a shout out to Josh. Uh, recent in the last two weeks, he's been killing it with the stories. He's been a, a yes. great he help at editorial. We've been pumping <clears throat> out way more content because Spencer does not represent so. me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I represented you. I said I was complimenting. Oh, no, no, I hold on, hold on. That, that Josh mind. guy does I not did, represent me. All right, just go on. <laughs> uh, that was part of the joke. But no, yes. Uh, uh Josh is killing it even though he won't uh toot his own horn I'll toot it for him <laughs> Whoa. get us uh yeah get us banned right at the very end all yeah. right and as <laughs> as for me guys as always I want to thank absolutely every single one of you for stopping by tonight and hanging out with us we had an amazing discussion I mean we spent like the first hour talking about how awful everything caught like how awful prices are i think that's a pretty good uh sign that we're all we're all in good companies that we can have really good conversations so yeah timon leslie hates me and hd dc3 rygar eccentric banana uh hey, youtube me wait, i know wait. you were here for a little while dante oh. wait wait i hit the wrong button no oh. that's, that's, why is it doing that one? Oh, that's why because this one there it is Oh, look, our poll results. Yes, which is worse, the new Tomb Raider or $5 per gallon on gas? 70% of you said uh, $5 per gallon on gas. 29% new Tomb Raider. 1% probably margin of error. No idea where that went. Honestly, guys, I think I'm going to have to agree with you because while I can actively ignore the Tomb Raider book and that company will eventually go out of business, I have to fill up my car. Like we or Not I, but like we have to fill up our car. So I'm going to be mad about that for... A good long while until my bank account recovers. <laughs> so the one thing, yeah, the one thing that I should have mentioned early on when you were talking gas prices is like, yo, just get get a motorcycle. Oh, okay, Josh. Yeah, yeah. we'll all just run out and what? We're, we don't live sell, in India, okay? We don't live your in China. Car and you get like three motorcycles and like gas for like a year. <laughs> look, sell my car. Look at look at this woke rhetoric here. He's trying to get us to to drive greener. No, I'm kidding. I mean, yeah, bikes are better. But also don't buy electric though. <laughs> no, do not buy electric. I've seen I've seen like three people lately doing the uh, like electric bikes, and I always just want to throw like a stick in the like not yep. motorcycles, but like the bicycles yes. that are like electric yep. powered. I always just want to throw a stick in their spoke and be like, learn to ride a bike. It's the most basic childhood activity of all time. Yeah. Get out start of here. Pelting people with rocks. Honestly, at this point. <laughs> I can't say anything legal anymore for legal purposes. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, look, it's a joke. Look, if there's one thing that we can co-opt from like Iranian government. It's like the stoning. Maybe they got something in there. Maybe, maybe they were onto something with, with the giant boulders into the ribs. Um, you just say, maybe we should just try well, it out. Uh, th there's your preview for the next episode, or like two weeks from now, the next episode of the Bible pod, uh, Bible Lens podcast. Should stoning come back? <laughs> the Bible podcast Honest lens. Bible podcast lens, lens, lens podcast Bible. That's my favorite show. But yes, guys, thank you all so much for stopping by and hanging out with us tonight. You, the fact that you guys watch us allows us to do this, and we are happy and excited to hang out with you every Wednesday. If you want to see more of us, obviously check out boundingintocomics.com every day for new news stories from pretty much everybody on this panel, except Cider, who handles our video content. You know, check out our YouTube channel. Every day we've got videos coming out from Cider highlighting the news of the week. We've obviously got Monday Rewind where Jacob and Cider break down the biggest news stories from the weekend that might have gone under the radar because most of us are away from our desks over the weekend. Uh, obviously, Tuesday's Tokyo Happy Hour. And we've got so much more in, in the works. You obviously sort of heard me uh, fanboying over things in the very beginning of the show. If you, ha if you hadn't, 
go back, give us those watch hours at the very beginning. That was a very shameless plug. If you want to see more of me, obviously you can find me on Twitter at Kabuto Writer Mav. If you want to see more of us live, you can come back here, same bat time, same bat channel next week for another episode of the Zero One stream, where me, Josh, Jacob, and Cider will break down the biggest pop culture news stories of the week. If you want to see more of me live before then, you can head over to my channel, Studio Kabuto, where every Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific time, I host a live stream where uh, the Good, the Mad, the Ugly live stream, where we uh, spend some more time giving... Uh, taking deep dives into topics around the sphere, things that might not get discussed on a lot of other shows, you know, anime, toku, video games, all that kind of fun stuff. It's an open conversation. If that sounds like something you want to do, come on down, come hang out. I'd love to have you. And until then, yeah, we will be, you know, check out boundingintocomics.com. Check out all of the stuff we have here. Go check out all of Jacob's content. It's all good. And until then, I think we can call it a night and we will see you next week. See ya. <laughs> One more kiss and I'll get lost I can take this anymore One more step, we have it all The fever is knocking at your door One more kiss and I'll get lost I can take this anymore One more step, we have it all The fever is knocking at your door Can you feel the fever? You give me a fever again <laughs>